Yo, 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 welcome to Team Rad Titan. And today we've got two special, very special guests. It's been six and a half years since we last touched base with them. We're going to be bringing in Ann Adams and Mark Martins, the, the owners of a premium collectible studio, the new PCS. We're going to be, they're going to be fielding your questions. We're going to be running through what they're going through. We've got some big updates to give you. And uh, we'll be just having a good banner and get together and seeing what's what in uh, 2024 and the challenges they faced since they took over what was a monster headache, uh, you know, project. So thanks very much, boys, for being here. I hope, uh, hope you all well. How's life treating you? Hanging in there. Same, same shit, different day. <laughs> <laughs> 45 seconds, 45 seconds. That's a new record. Al. There we go. And it was a guest. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. I didn't swear. I there didn't swear within, there's a thing that apparently if you don't swear within the, th the first 13, 12 to 13 minutes, you can be uh, monetized. And Gio and I never make it. <laughs> yeah, never, never, never oh, it. my bad. <laughs> no, it's all right. You, you just, all, all you did that was take away the blame from me, Alex, because usually it's always me. Occasionally, if Alex on the whiskey, it's him, but most of the time it's me. There we well, go. No, normally, what happens is we'll say, yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to try. We're going to go on the chat. We're going to try. We've got like 12 to 13 minutes. Let's, let's just do it. And if we go <laughs> straight on, and then George is like, oh, for fuck's sake. Da -da -da. I'm like, oh, <laughs> come on. <laughs> The worst part is, is we've got children as well, and like little children. So the fact that we can't do it is alarming, to say the least. Yeah, you can only imagine what's going. On. I'm just lucky; I've never been called into school as of yet for bad yeah. language. So that's, that's a win. Right. Well, this is this is this is my outlet. So I try not to cuss around my kids, but when they're not around, yeah, it's on like Donkey Kong. <laughs> <laughs> is that is a famous Billy Connolly quote? Have you, you, you probably have you never heard of him? Like, but you know who Billy Connolly is? It's like a massive comedian sort of uh he did some films and stuff but over there probably not so but so good and he said you know people used to say that swearing is a sign of um having a a low intellect he said but you know i've read the dictionary i've, I've been through every word and fuck is still my favorite <laughs> <laughs> there we go fair enough i can buy into that <laughs> all right okay, i'm going so, beer i mean ben yeah. is supposed to bring us some beers where's our six pack <laughs> Yeah, I'm 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 on the old uh, the Czech stuff today. Tonight, nice. I'm on the Guinness. So yeah, boom. Okay, we got but, something coming soon, so we'll be joining you hopefully in the next five ten minutes. Yeah, <laughs> so boys, I'm gonna say to you, this has been like a crazy crazy turnaround in the uptake in PCS collectibles. I mean, I I just want to say right out there that congratulations on winning the uh, statue company of the year for 2023 at the most prestigious statue awards in the world so congratulations thank you, thank to both no we appreciate it yeah absolutely. how does it feel and how does it feel to finally start seeing some of that real recognition i mean you got some you got some trolls now you've got people going after you you know you're the name on everybody's lips how's that feel? Oh, oh yeah so I, I one of our one of our pcs family members wrote in our group they're like uh, and this, I'm going to use this forever from here on out is like when you're playing video games, when you start running into enemies, you know, you're going the right way. So that's, that's kind of what we're doing it's with great. PCS, right? We're starting great. to see more and more haters pop up and people complaining that don't even buy our stuff. Uh, so it must oh, no, be they're the only ones that do complain most of the time, bro. They're the loudest voices on social yep. media. We all know that. That the yep. people that come in and have all that that highlight every single thing, and this is why you should, you know, you should, I don't buy or I wouldn't buy. It. It's always the people that have never put that that, that yep. dime in your pocket, never. Yeah, well, that, the, the, I kind of equated to. Uh, I was thinking about this like a couple of weeks ago. How there's a lot of people within the. Th this is supposed to be fun, right? This community, what we do, yeah, yeah. What we make, what people buy. Like this is supposed to be fun, nostalgia, bringing our childhood <laughs> back. Look at a statue, have fun, right? So like it it irks me when I see like somebody will post what they just bought and like I love it, blah, blah, blah. And then you'll have your troll that will come in and say, Oh, but yeah, this doesn't look good. That doesn't look good. It's like you just shit it in that person's Cheerios. They're is ecstatic about their their collectible that they just picked up and yeah, yeah. jumped in there for no reason. And to your point, a lot of the times it are it is people that either don't buy our stuff or even when I see people go into like other uh, collector groups uh, and say they don't buy sideshow, but they go in there and bash, bash sideshow, but don't buy anything. Right. Uh, and it's, I equate it to, we, we ship via FedEx. That would be like me going into UPS and be like, your shipping sucks. And I can't believe you guys ship this slow when you have a Brown truck. 
It's like, I don't even use you. I use FedEx. Why am I wasting my yeah. time talking about you? Know, do, you know, do you know what it boils down to, don't you? You don't want me to tell you what it is. The psychology of it is very simple. Mm -hmm. It's a justification to, to get an excuse that you're right. So yeah. when people don't buy your stuff, they want to put something out there so they get 10 people that agree that makes them feel better about the, their decision. Yeah. And it's always the same with everything. That's why we've always said, you know, on the channel, you know, I mean, we've we've seen a, a massive uptake in growth over the last 12 months for us. But, you know, we've been we've been we've been here from the longest time. Yeah. And it's, uh, you know, at the time you're sort of like you, we've always said, you know, saying yes to everything gets you all the following, all the subscribers, all the, you know, every, if everything is good, then, you know, you've, you, you're getting friends. Yeah, but you're, you're, you know, there. You know, if you've got a five thousand edition size piece and you say it's crap, you've just pissed off five thousand people. Yeah. That's how quick it happens. Yep. And yep. I don't care who you are. Nobody wants to hear they've just dropped, you know, yeah. anywhere from seven hundred fifty dollars to three thousand dollars, and you and 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 that was bad, or at least from your yep. perspective it is. So it's just yep. really, it's just reassuring the person that you know their feelings are correct. It's just looking for someone to say, yeah, you're totally right. And that's a, yep. I think that's a that's a sad thing because you know in the end. Those people ain't in your room, bro. Yeah. When you're surrounded by all this stuff, it has to be stuff that touches something inside yourself. Otherwise, it's a lonely room full of strangers. You need yep. to look around and be like, you know, I remember that from Marvel versus Capcom game. I played that for two years religiously. Or, you know, I remember, I mean, when the turtles broke, for example, like, you know, a line of your own. You know, I remember that. I remember that like it was yesterday. I still remember, I'll tell you a story. I, I remember once, do you remember the very first Nintendo game of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game. Do you remember that? Ever first Nintendo one. The hardest games ever. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah so that, that one was on the Nintendo, right? Where they had the red bandanas. It was really... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm a kid now, right? And I remember I was sneaking through and I was around Christmas time, my mother's wrapping it, wrapping up the whole Nintendo system. And when I woke up Christmas Day, she brought me out a bike. And I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> it turns out that some kid on my estate was, you know, the mother had given it to my mum to wrap up and hide. And it weren't even mine. I tell you oh. what, that, <laughs> that bike would suck the ass. But honestly, the point was is that that's the nostalgia we're talking about, them sort of moments. They just stay with you. I don't, I don't know if it's a man thing. We, I think we're all a little bit like that. Yeah. You just you keep stuff, it stays with you forever, and you sort yeah. of like want to pass it on a little bit and sort of want your kids to enjoy it. So, I'm hoping to drop that you know, the X Men 97 thing on my boys and see. I have to proof watch it first, but I'm hoping that you know they can sort of get a little bit of an enjoyment from that, like I did, because that was a big thing for me as well. Yeah, yeah, yep, absolutely. Yeah, and it's, I mean, there's enough like craziness and toxicity within the world as it is that I mean, this should be ours everybody's escape right this this industry this I, I hate putting it in mafia terms but this thing of ours right uh think of ours, yeah right this should be fun it should not you get on and it's like oh here goes this person again or here goes that person again uh first just having fun uh with this right and i find it hilarious like the uh i don't mind constructive criticism uh, I would say we're probably one of the best companies when it comes to listening to our fans and making changes. And people that have followed us for years know that, right? We, what do we scope? Myers one third, Head like five times, Rocky four, uh, and, and the list just goes on of changes that we've, I mean, RoboCop, I ended up going into like a huge RoboCop group and I posted our, our statue. It was like, hey, you guys are the experts. We're doing the best we can. Let me know if there's anything that stands out to you. And that group was amazing. Like nobody was like, oh, this is a piece of crap or this doesn't look. No, they were like, oh, this looks great. But if you could add this, it's, this is a piece that was in the movie. Here's here's the, the screenshot for it, blah, blah, blah. I was like, yeah. that is awesome. Uh, Ghostbusters. Yeah, Ghostbusters was another one. Few changes. Yeah. So, so, so that's They're fantastic, by the way, gents. I have to say they, they look really good. The, the Ghostbuster stuff looks really, really good. I thought that was that's a tr that's a tricky one, man. Yeah. When, I, when you know when you that was when I seen that and I saw some of the pictures and stuff coming out and I knew you were doing it. I was like, you know, with just the little teasers and stuff. I was thinking in my to myself, man, that's a challenge that one. Yeah. That's a tough one, them ones, because I mean they're very identifiable characters, especially like people like Dan Aykroyd and Bill Murray and stuff like oh, that. Yeah. That's, that's crazy, man. And I mean, yeah. look, you, look what you did with that. I mean, that's yeah. just. 
I, I just you get a little bit of the cartoon look you get a little bit of the real person look it just ticks so many boxes man congratulations on yep. this is a really good looking fantastic and we all love egon thank you yeah. thank you and it, it's sold out now so it's uh yeah i mean your, your stuff's just been going crazy you know it's really really been taken off it's been going mad and i'm really i've got to say without sounding condescending i'm very proud of what you've managed to do like i say six and a half years ago we sat down and you put out there this is what we're going to try and do this is what we i mean you you walked into a right puddle of shit, to be honest yeah. you oh yeah you no know, like like we were talking about you know without you there would be a lot of thousands of collectors i have a lot of money out of pocket if yeah. it wasn't for you stepping in and trying to rectify and fix what can only be, be described as yeah. an absolute shit show of a mess that was left behind by the previous owner yep absolutely i mean we put a million dollars of our own money like besides buying the company like we put a million dollars of our own money towards refunds of basically revenue money we've never collected mm -hmm. right so that's just a wow. million dollars out gone nothing right it's but it was the the right thing to do and we tried to do as much as we could uh for the collectors and people that were left uh that wanted their refunds and etc uh, but yeah, you're right. I mean, when we looked and went through the balance sheet and everything else even further, like it was a nightmare would be an understatement of, of what we in, inherited. Um, uh, and a lot of people don't understand, they think they do, but they don't, uh, how contracts work when you buy a company. Right. Yeah. Uh, so I'm in banking or I was in banking 21 years and I was in corporate investment banking. So I've worked on a lot of uh, mergers and acquisition deals. Yeah. Uh, when you put in a contract and it, whether you buy stock or you buy just assets, right? So we bought the stock of the whole company, right? When you put together a stock purchase agreement, you have different rules within there. Usually when you buy a company, uh, the company has to leave what's called working capital in the company. So from a PCS perspective, that would have meant any product that is in development every penny that was collected needed to be in the bank account, right? Yep. All that cash needed to be in there. Guess what? The previous owner had already spent that cash, right? So and was, uh, that, and was selling stuff behind the scenes as well, personally. Yeah. Yep. So, so with that cash not there, the only other option is you write into the contract. If there are any liabilities that pop up that aren't already on the balance sheet, or a collector wants a refund, the previous owner is responsible for that because yes. he still had that cash, right? Yeah. So people didn't understand that. They were like, oh no, you bought the company, so you're responsible for all the refunds. And they're like, uh, no, actually we're not. <laughs> yeah. We just happened to do the first million and we had to eventually just be like, you know what, that's that's it. We can't, we can't keep bleeding uh, for something we're not responsible for. So. I mean, yeah, it's like, you know, Jesus, it's, 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 it's amazing though, isn't it? How people speak on social media so openly and so uh, assuredly about certain things that they absolutely have no idea about. I mean, it has to be my, it has to be my pet peeve really to be honest. I've got to be honest, I get really fed up. I mean, I, I, I find it difficult, it, you know, because some people come at you with like, and you're just thinking to yourself, that doesn't seem right. Is that right? Yeah. Start reading, yeah. start looking into it, and, and they almost have you convinced for a second, and you're like, Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Sure. and then you start looking into it, and you're like, oh, Jesus Christ, I'm not even close. Yep, absolutely. But you know, yeah, that's I mean, that's that's I guess that's the birth of social media, isn't it? That's the problem is that yeah. you're giving everybody a voice, and some people yeah. really should carry on licking buses at the you know, at school, yeah, it's almost the the, the voice with no consequence, right? So it's like a lot of the stuff you hear, Alex hears, I hear, Mark here, uh, will hear something and like, yeah, they'll say it on social media, but you come to me or come to Mark or to you guys, you're not gonna, they don't say it in front of you, right? I mean, I'm not, I'm not really a fighter, so like, I'm not, I'm not going to really do much about it, but I've had so many people say to me, oh yeah, when I see you at a convention, I'm going to punch you in the face and all this stuff, and I'm like, okay. I've okay. been to a lot of I've been to a lot of conventions, and touch wood, I haven't been punched in the face yet. So yeah. it's like yeah, I'll, have my, I'll have my I'll have my cheek ready. Let's go. They, 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 they probably can't find your chin with all that beard, bro. They're probably like, I'm definitely missed. Well, I mean, when does that chin even start? I don't even know. 
<laughs> but yeah, I mean, really with you going on, like, I mean, honestly, talking about, you know, you know, getting back onto like the Ghostbusters line and stuff. Tell me about how that sort of came into development. What was it about that? Was that the, did you think about that because of the new film that started to come out? Was it like so, it started to get a second win and you thought, yeah, we should we should touch on this? I mean, this is unbelievable, the other one. Oh, yeah. Uh, Sorry, uh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on for now, because that's the pre-orders. We'll make a big one on that bit. So, yeah, hold yeah, back. So, we'll talk uh, about these ones first. It would lead into yeah, tell me how that... Tell me how that, came, first, yeah. <laughs> tell me how that came into being. Like, what was it about? What made that happen? Was that always an idea of yours? Or was the the new movies you thought, yeah, let's, let's go in for this? Or what happened? Yeah, yeah. So it, it wasn't the new movie. So uh, as as this may sound vain, and I try not, I'm not vain. I don't have a an ego. Uh, but Liar. a lot of the licenses that <laughs> a lot of the the licenses uh, that I end up going after are like stuff I want to make, stuff I want to collect. Right. So I wanted uh, a team of Ghostbusters. Uh, I wanted to have the terror dogs. Uh, this is like stuff that like I want in my collection. Uh, and I mean, even with the Ghostbusters, like we're doing a like a, a Stay Puff that's going to be like Godzilla going through a city. It's going to be freaking dope as hell. Uh, that's awesome. but, yeah, but it, a lot of the stuff is in and I'll, I'll I'll thank Mark for this, because early on when we first got PCS, like I would second guess myself a lot uh when it would come to like a design or a selection uh and mark would constantly hammer home he's like dude just trust your gut trust your gut trust your gut uh and i would say last year was when i finally got to the point where of if i would display it then i'm gonna make it uh if it's a design or a character that i look at and i'm like uh that i, I don't even want to buy that and it's like why am i making that but people need to appreciate as well, you know, like you just said, you've come from a banking background. You come from a banking background. When we, we're talking about, we're talking about completely two different things here. We're talking about yeah. two different worlds. We're talking about numbers, facts, and figures. They never lie. And this yeah. is a very opinion-based sort of stomach part. There's no brain. There's not much brain going on here. It's all heart. Yep. And, and they're the stuff that is successful. So I, I understand you taking on a new company and not trusting straight off the bat that you're getting everything right that comes with encouragement constructive criticism support yep. you know that that's how you get to that sort of you get to that outcome you know otherwise you're always going to be doubting yourself you know this is something that's important to remember because you've not had the easiest ride as soon as you took over from you know the original pop culture shock that was there you you yep. changing that company around has taken a few years to really iron that stuff out and stamp your own identity on it i mean that must have been really tough for you yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And it's, I'm one of the, the rare people that's right and left brain. Uh, so I used to draw, paint, sculpt on the side, but very analytical, very problem solving oriented, uh, accounting degree, and then my banking for, for 21 years. But like I was doing 3D sculpting when I first graduated from college 20 something years ago. Uh, I even taught 3D animation while I was still working at the bank uh, as well. So it's, I've always had that that in me, uh, and I think that's what helped me be successful in banking was that I had that creative side. Like I would find solutions that my clients wouldn't think of. Uh, and the funny thing is, whenever I close a deal, you get this thing called a deal toy, which is basically something to co co commemorate the deal you just closed. Uh, I would sketch yeah. out all of our deal toys. I made like 70 of them when I was in banking. <laughs> uh, so it was like my art side got to get a little hit there. But yeah, no, it's it did take a while to get to the point where it's, I trust the first thought that comes in into my head. Uh, like a, a good example is our, uh, our Chun-Li that we did, the power lifting Chun-Li. Uh, I would say everybody in the studio said it was a stupid idea. <laughs> everybody, Mark included. Even me. Uh, said it was a stupid, <laughs> stupid idea. And I was like, look, Street Fighter is popular. Everybody loves Chun-Li. There are so many people that work out and that own gyms or have personal trainers. Why don't we do something different with Street Fighter? Everybody has done Chun-Li doing a move or doing the fight pose. Why don't we do something different? I was like, if I was a gym owner, I would love this in my gym or in a CrossFit gym or whatever, sitting on the counter. And lo and behold, yep. that thing done that's why I like the, uh, the promo pitches where you actually had them on in the gym, yep. don't you? 
Yeah. Yep. Kind of- I mean, I've got to be honest. I, Alex was Alex was very positive about um about that. He thought it was a fantastic idea when this Probably first dropped. Idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He no, thought it was yeah. a fa- he, he actually said as well, if you remember right, there was a whole set of Marvel, I think, was it flare cards? I think it might yeah, have been flare, flare cards. But they were like, was, um, they were uh, the X Men that were on the beach, weren't they? Like Wolverine cooking sausages on, on a barbecue yeah, yeah, using yeah, his yeah. blade, Cyclops sitting with like sunglasses with Jean Grey. And that was a completely different look. So this has connotations of that, yeah. where you're like taking the character put them in a different environment and a different way that we see them. Yeah. Um, it's genius, man. It's really, really clever, really clever idea. Can't wait to see what you do with Zangief with that. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I think I'm putting him more like a uh, strong man. So like either moving the stones or uh, uh, I'm going to do something strong man related for, uh, for Zangief and probably Armika too. You could get, you could get him doing uh, what is the, do you remember the Atlas? I don't, I think they used to call it the Atlas yeah, lift or the, Atlas. you know, where you've got one, you're, you're on ropes either side and you're holding up pillars. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. You're welcome for that, Ant. Merry Christmas, yeah, bro. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they had them big leaning steel things. You used to hold them for as long as they can. Yeah. You can take yeah. that with you, bro. Take that with you. Absolutely. Yeah, I think you did a cracking job with Dan Aykroyd. Like I say, these, I think, I think people don't really understand just, I mean, that's, they're a real difficult sort of sell. It, like, in terms of getting the portraits right, because they're so iconic. And yeah. they're quite, like I say, Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd, if you saw their face in a crowd, you'd pick them out immediately. You could, like, they're just identifiable straight away in your mind. Yep. So, I think you did a cracking job with this. I think it looks great. Yep. All right, well, so the, the, Sorry. the kicker with, like, a lot of the likeness stuff is, and this is where uh, likenesses get a little wishy-washy. Uh, and what I mean by that is, some of the, the newer companies, they'll do a, a new Batman or a, a likeness of somebody that of a movie that just came out, right? Like a yep. year ago or two years ago or even five years if you're doing MCU, right? Uh, when you do older movies, so let's, let's hit Rocky, right? Uh, everybody has their view of what Stallone should look like, right? The, oh, yeah. Some people remember Stallone from 79, right? That's a... The first Rocky, that is a completely yep. different looking Stallone than how he looked in three and four, where he was shredded, skinnier face, uh, et cetera. Uh, that's yeah. the same thing with Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? So in Barbarian, his face was different than in Destroyer when he was, oh, yeah. there, right? It's, yeah. And it's people yeah, and people don't realize that our sculptors do, our art directors do. Uh, but a lot of uh, people that just want to comment to comment don't realize that. I mean, we had somebody post uh, like the scope next to Destroyer and like one of our fans like jumped in and said, wrong movie, dude. Uh, and it's like, it's, it's just stuff like that. Uh, and it's funny on the, like on the Conan license uh, or the, the, the Conan that we just did, the, the half scale. Uh, yeah. We actually, and this is, the factory shut down for, for Chinese New Year, right? Uh, and we did glass eyes for Conan. They sent us the wrong glass eyes before they left. Uh, ah. We have uh, basically licensing targets we have to hit with our licenses. Yes. So he still had to go up for pre-order because uh, yeah. you have marketing due, uh, due dates. Yes. Uh, we had to basically print uh, round eyes and then paint them. And the problem with doing that, once you add that paint, you can't push that eye all the way up against the sculpted lid. So that yeah. eye was probably a couple of millimeters behind uh, the eye socket. Uh, for the war paint version, you can't really can't really tell the, well, the no. eye shadow, right? Because he has yeah, the black, black is going to help there, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. But the uh, the skin tone version, that it's more apparent. His eyes look smaller, uh, etc. Uh, and it's, it's funny. So we ended up, uh, we finally got the eyes in. So we went ahead and printed another torso and we're having, uh, Casey loves painting that up for us. And then we'll put the, the real eyes in there and then retake the pictures for the classic version. Uh, wow. but when we, we reprinted, uh, the heads. I wanted to see, cause this goes to your point of when somebody keeps saying something and then you start like, you start second guessing yourself or you start believing it. Oh, maybe they are right. Right. Yeah, so, yeah, definitely. Like people are like, oh, the third scale looks so much better, blah, blah, blah. So we printed no. the third scale head, 
we printed the original sculpted head for the half scale, and then we printed the final head for the half scale. Numbered them one, two, three, uh, and we had like just the uh, the the eyes in there, not the glass eyes, but just like sculpted yeah. eyes in there, so it looked regular. Uh, and we put it on the table. My painter went to the table and he was like, "Oh yeah, three looks good. This looks so much better than than uh, the one we put up for pre order." I'm like, "Dude, it's the same fucking sculpt." And he was like, "No, it's not." I was like, uh, "Yes, it True, is." Go, uh, ask, go ask Jack. Enough, wow. uh, when yeah. I was at exam as well, people would um, say, "Oh my god, this sculpt is off." Yeah. Uh, the face is off. The uh, you know, this likeness, whatever. Um, XM would kind of not do anything to the sculpt. Yeah. They would release it, and then people would go, "I'm so glad XM listened to their fans." And yeah. It happened so many times. It happened like more times than I, I I remember. Like you know, it was funny. It was just hilarious. People going, "Oh my god, um, Psylocke is off or Rogue or whoever," and it just yep. like, when it happened, they didn't do a thing to it. They didn't change oh, anything to it. Yeah. 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 So, so you, can, you definitely can be guilty as a company of of listening too much. Too much. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's a really about, hard balance, isn't it? It's a tough. Yes. It's a tough, tough. And you know, you've you've just you know let a little glimpse behind the sort of uh, you know the wizard's curtain over there with the exactly the things you've just said. You've still got targets and deadlines yep. that people of power. That, that are letting you make these things expect done that you have to do and then explain later and sometimes the people will just say things like well you know why did they do that why don't they just bloody wait why is a stupid thing you know and you're just yep. a bit like you would like to wait but sometimes you you just can't yeah sometimes your, your back's up against the wall and it's like no we've got we've got to do this date otherwise we're going to have to answer to the wrong people yep. answering to potential customers is actually probably the easier bit than oh, actually yeah. having to deal with the higher yeah. end which is you know, we've sat down with these people. We've broken bread with these people. We've had meals with these people, and these people are fucking killers. You don't, you know. I've I've also had many many a meal with uh, very unsavoury people, and believe me, that the lines are not too different. You, you know, you, that, you know, you're you're swimming with sharks there. Believe yep. me, so yep. I can understand your your conundrum for sure. Yep, and the, um, the kicker is licensors do not like when you make changes afterwards. Uh, yeah, we've had to have a lot of fight slash come to Jesus moments with licensors when we make those uh, those changes. Uh, but again, it's when we feel like it's in the best interest for us and the, and the fans. So again, we want to display this, right? So uh, with our uh, Myers one third is a prime example. Like we were kept looking at us like, I don't even like it. Like we need to change it. But we had a target. We had to hit, hit the date to get yeah. it out. So it's like, well, we got to update this and make it look so good that the licensor is like, okay, yeah, 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 go ahead and do that one, right? Wasn't there already um, the original issues with Myers because of um, Chatner, the Chatner likeness thing? Yes. Because the mask, yeah, the mask was originally someone went to a petrol station, they bought William Shatner mask, bleached it, painted it, did whatever. It made it into the movie, the movie got big. And then yeah. whenever now licensing happens, it's always it's Shatner so basically it's a big deal now yeah it's like it's Captain Kirk basically yeah William yeah. Shatner yep yeah. but it's it goes even further than that so the the first sculpt that we got the reason one of the reasons it probably wasn't as good is because we had a certain art director on it that was probably halfway out uh, -huh. uh and so once we tuck it over uh, and made it right, the like it's beyond Shatner. It's Shatner, but with Nick Castle's face and nose underneath it, pushing the oh, mask no. in a certain certain way, right? So you can do a Myers mask, but to do a Nick Castle wearing a Myers mask, like that's even another detail that people that's, don't realize that you have to put into it. Well, that's but something yeah. actually I find just that Sorry, well, I'm no, just going to go. Through, I was just going through these images, but when we yeah, because one, one of the questions, one, one, one of uh, one of the questions was about this Goza. So yeah, definitely, I would no, like no, to no, hear we'll, ants. Yeah, we will come back to it. It's just that um, I just want to keep. I wanted to keep the images moving because I've got like a folder of 400 images. So it was just to kind of keep the move to keep them moving. And if something comes up, but when we do talk about it, I will come back to it. Also, uh, people are asking questions in the comments. I'm starring those and I'm putting them to one side and we'll come back to those as well, so don't worry. Uh, and they have asked questions in the group. One of the questions I was actually going to ask is something I've uh, kind of found out the other day, but you know, people may not know, is I know you have 
like the license to do the kind of horror stuff, um, you know, like, and, and a lot of those kind of classic horror. But I, I found out the other day that um, uh, Freddy and Jason have kind of been taken out of those uh, New Line licenses. Uh, yeah. So it used to be like within New Line, you would get like everything. And now the estates back in 2020 or so, they took them out. And you have to now go directly to the estate if you want to do a Freddy or a Jason. Is that what's causing you more delays with that? or? Uh, well, it's part of that for for Freddy. Uh, Jason's even weirder uh, because the estate has like, I want to, I can't remember exactly, so don't quote me, but the estate either has like the, original jason or the or the name and then the studio has like the later films but not the hockey mask like it's really yeah, uh really yeah it's really squirrely with uh with that one well that's the problem with a lot of the older things from the 80s i mean now for example like i'll just keep it simple something like um, mcu other than probably robert downey jr but with the mcu stuff like Marvel pays those actors so that they then, or Disney, so they then own that likeness. Back yep. in the day, it would be, you would have to speak to, like, you know, Arnold, who would have his likeness, he would have yep. merchandise within his contract, um, and that's why you don't get any kind of um, Mel Gibson stuff, because Mel Gibson's very religious, and he doesn't want figures made of him, so you won't yep. get Mad yep. Max, you won't get, like, all these other lethal weapon. you won't get those things because of that, and it's yep. Those old kind of contracts are really hard. That's why it took so long to get a Ripley. Um, yeah, like loads of things. And it's like people don't understand how some licenses they'll give out to anyone. Anyone who pays, they'll give them. But some yeah. of them just are so difficult. You know. Well, and Alex, a, thou shalt not worship false idols, son. There yeah. we go. Know your Bible, that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but there's there's even another layer on top of that because. For likenesses, you could have the studio owns the likeness rights, but the actor still has to approve. Yeah. So yeah. we have a couple uh, that are like that. So like our our Conan is like that. Uh, yeah. The studio owns the rights, but Arnold still has to approve it. Uh, yeah. uh, it's the same with our Celine statue uh, for Underworld. Uh, studio has the rights, but Kate still has to approve. So we're at the the whims of uh, actors sometimes just waiting to get approval. Uh, our Gladiator that's coming out soon was the same thing uh, yeah. with getting uh, studio has it, but Russell Crowe has to approve it. Uh, what about this piece? Uh, this one, I don't think, yes, they had to send it to his agent as well. That's right. Oh, well, because yeah. I know with this piece, he got, he got fucked over big time and he got paid like like, like basically hardly anything for this film. Yep. It was kind of yep. a film where obviously it's the one that kind of one of the films that made him and is very iconic, but apparently his 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 um salary was well, it's still a decent salary, but for an actor yep. it wasn't. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, but you'd take that. You you as an actor, you would take that because everybody quotes this to him and everybody remembers this. If you'd have it. It's worse to have do it and it'd be a shit film and nobody really remembered or you get slated for being in it, then it's even worse. Yeah. At least it's something that actually led to a lot more work, a lot more, you know, no you know, right for it. Um, I think it was Rowan, yeah. actually, my friend Rowan. He he uh, he met some girl on uh, on a dating app and they went on a date and uh, like he was reporting to me the following like uh, the couple of days after. And I said, oh, you know, what's she like, blah, blah, blah. What does she work in? And she goes, oh, he, she works in uh, mergers and acquisitions. And I was like, are you joking? And he goes, no, no, that's what she works in. I go, yeah, because that's 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 fucking um, American Psycho. He goes, <laughs> I go, yeah, he's in. He goes, oh, I work in uh, murders and executions. And she's like, what? <laughs> he goes, yeah, mur murders and acquisitions. Yeah. So I had to sort of quote it there, really. And he always sort of goes, oh, I have to return some videotapes. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> yeah I, do you know it's funny? I've I've never seen this film. It's never. a good bit of the film. Oh, you gotta see it. It's a good one. Yeah. yeah, I've, I've never, I've never sat down to watch it. Greatest love of all is powerful. Yeah, <laughs> I've seen the clips. Like the Cecilia stuff is my favorite clip. Yeah, yeah, Sabrina. Yeah, talking don't about Phil Collins. It's, 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 it's just too much. It's just too much. Yeah. <laughs> but no, this is a great piece. Uh, also, the Candyman. That was always one as well. 
I, the problem Perhaps. is I don't collect, I don't collect one third. Um, so for me to see it, I was always like, oh man, and it was great as well because uh, Tony Todd. There's a picture of Tony Todd actually with it, which is awesome. Um, yeah, yeah, that's that's just, that's just worth its weight in gold, isn't it? That. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He liked nice it. Well. it. Obviously, like it, behind the scenes, when you, what did he think? Oh, he loved it. And the uh, the platinum exclusive comes with his autograph. So, not Robo signatures. Like he literally has the COAs at his house right now, signing them. Oh, so, wow. oh, that's badass, bro. Did I was going to uh, ask you about something. What did you, did you come up with that platinum coin thing? I was going to say, did you shake uh, his hand? Because his hands are massive. So this is, is that- this is this is this is probably TMI. Uh, a lot of my <laughs> ideas come during my morning shit or my morning shower. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, and that the the coin thing was, I wanted to do something different, and I wanted to, I wanted to give back, right? Uh, isn't that like a thousand dollars worth of metal you just given away? Though? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So the the platinums are in, and it, it's funny. So like, I'll, I'll see a, a post where somebody's like, "Oh, nobody wants a coin," and I'm like, "Look, if you don't, if you get the coin I'll and you don't want, want it, coin. you can literally turn around and go to any precious metal dealer or shop and sell it immediately. It's literally an ounce of silver, ounce of platinum, or an ounce of gold." Uh, and I think gold is That's like a fantastic two, idea. Uh, yeah, gold I'm, is. I'm going like, to attri- attribute it to your morning shit because everyone has the best ideas on the crapper man. Yes, that, that, that is an un- that's a really clever idea. And having your like print, your like symbol on it, and all that. Yep. I think that's a fantastic. I, I was. I think we were talking about it when it was shared in the group. The ruby thing. I love the ticket. The whole. The whole. Yeah, was, uh, it, the whole look is fantastic. Cost, cost of mark cost was no no. I was going to ask you, is it just one per edition size then? One per run yes. that you do that? Yes. Yep. So, like, how well, is it selected? Is it random? Random. Yeah. Random. Yeah. So, like, I remember, uh, again, for, again, I remember, I remember coming, coming out and being like, so not random then. And I, and I, I had to put on the comment, I had to respond and, and just basically say, like, why do you say that? Yeah. What about this makes it not look random? Yeah. Or it's a bit suspect. This is the response. I said, what is a bit suspect? What? What am I missing? Yeah. I was, and I actually put on the finger, I actually put in the response. Is it, are they best friends? Have you got pictures of them having dinner? Is he dating Ant's wife? What's going, what have you got yeah. that's making you think this way? And it's just like, oh no, nothing. I just, and I'm just sitting there like, honestly, I just think to myself, what the fuck is going on? Like, honestly, yeah. like crazy. Yeah. I, I thought to myself, yeah. what what makes you think it's not random? I don't, I can't understand it. I, th- I thought he actually had some juicy gossip or information, you know? Yeah, like I saw that from the, bins yeah. or something, but just, just, just useless. Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, like we were originally, we were going to like buy one of those little bingo roller things and then <laughs> it dropped, like film it, and then here's the number that's going to get it. And I was like, man, just pull up Excel, do a random number generator, one through 75, and then that's the one that's going to get it done <laughs> yeah i know so i mean we have this we have this thing here as well like you know i mean i think me and alex are only people that sort of like get it you know we're the we're the guys that when people start for example when you sent us the conans um you know the the, the one third ones we, yeah. we're the guys that when we do the reviews and when we talk we say we're the only we say this has been sent to us by pcs and they want to hear what i have to say about it. we you know we're the so you know, but we still have to. You know, we've only we've started posting reviews and stuff again. And I got this fan art, the Thanos piece in that I really like. And honestly, people just start with like I got it for nothing. I didn't pay for it. I'm just like, what the fuck is that? Oh my! Oh, where do you get that from? Oh, we're the only we're the guys that tell you all the time. How do you get that? And it's just it's it just purely yeah. is people yeah. just yeah. talking when they should be listening. Yes. When we did the contest yeah. as well, we did the. Um, we paid, so we, we when we had our, um, it was actually a hundred uh, subscribers, and actually you guys gave the green for that, which was awesome. Uh, yes. Appreciate yep. that. So uh, when we did that, Thanks we paid that. Uh, um, for the period. We probably paid about two hundred and forty dollars for uh, Gleam, and we actually paid for that, use it out of our yeah. own pocket to make yep. sure that everything was, you know, Legit. kosher. So no one could ask any questions. We pull up Gleam, we go bang, it's done. And then we yeah. use like anything else where we did um, the live ones on the chat. We pull all the comments on the side. We drop it into uh, random.org 
bang, it's all done live and it's all there. Yep. And then some guy comes in going, oh, yeah, you guys, I was so suspicious. One of your mods won. Yeah, you just, you well set that up and blah, 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 blah. We're like, fuck you, man. You just yep. basically just win. Yep. Yeah, but, it, you know, it just, it, like, again, it goes just down to the irresponsibility of just putting something out there. I mean, again, shitting on that guy. That guy got that. Yeah. And I mean, he must have felt like, I don't give a fuck. He must have felt like fucking Charlie Bucket when he pulled that out of his box, man. I don't give a shit who you are. He yeah. must have thought, Jesus Christ, I've got this, you know, that's how, you know, how awesome is that? For someone yeah. to sort of like question the integrity on it, I just thought it was fucking low, man. I thought it was yeah. really low. Well, and, and I think that's... Of voucher as well. And then you yeah. get the voucher as well. You get the... the, the oh, the yeah. It's amazing. It's an amazing, right? It's yeah. amazing. Thing. You got that statue for free, basically. And then you got yeah. $1,000 platinum and then the $200 credit. And then also yep. when you buy on the site, you get 5% back as well. So, yep. yeah, you probably was in And 10% <laughs> off immediately. So it's, you got 50% no, off. It's these, it's these things that I'm talking about where you, um, this is stuff that sort of, you know, makes you, you know, in, in, the, in, in, you know, we've been around a long time and they're just out of the box ideas. They're, that's really clever. Yep. See what I'm saying? Because it's not a copy from anything else. It's sort mm. of like just... You know, I mean, people have done coins. I actually did coins before, but they're valueless coins. They have a, yeah. a print on them yep. uh, for the character, but outside of collecting, it's absolutely useless. Nobody would want that coin unless they were maybe like, you know, a comic book collector of some kind, and they wouldn't pay a lot of money for it. So yeah. I just, I think it's a really clever idea, and I really, I have to say, Matt, kudos to you on that. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, that was a, that was definitely be, a fun one. Yeah. So we've we, we've been told to let you talk now as well as we're talking over you too much. <laughs> um, with the next picture as well, um, this is then something which I'm totally selfish. I'm going to totally hijack this, and I want to know about this. So we've just had the um, anniversary edition just came out, uh, that the uh, 4K version, and um, yeah. So is there any update on the on the Chrome or? Yes. So I've been sitting on this license for three years uh, we've had the crow one-third license for that long uh, one of the things that i've we've done since we've owned this company is i'll call it playing nice in the sandbox uh, and what i mean by that is if i see another maker putting something out uh, even if i'm about to release the same thing like I'm not going to post a, a sneak on the same day as their pre-order or the same day of their announcement to try to screw their pre-order. Uh, there's been at least three or four companies that have done that to us. Uh, one company did it literally as soon as we got the company uh, back in 2017. Uh, and there's been more that have done it. Like we'll show show something or we're about to do a pre-order and then they'll show a work in progress of something that's probably like 20% done in sculpt or it's just a concept uh, to try to get people to not buy and to wait, right? Uh, and we've always played nice in the sandbox of not doing that uh, or trying not to go after licenses <laughs> that other people have because there's <laughs> enough for all of us. We can, everybody can get in their own lane. Uh, and so for example, with the crow, uh sideshow had the quarter scale and then they were doing a six scale right afterwards so i was like well i'll just wait till you're done and then we'll that's when we'll announce that we're doing uh the third scale so i think the six scale came out like a year and a half ago uh that was their latest so that's a, that was an example of us uh playing nice in the sandbox now with that said uh I kind of hit my tipping point earlier this year uh, when uh, another company copied something else that we did. And I was like, you know what? Gloves off at this point. Uh, if you're not a, a FOP, friend of PCS, then it's game on. Uh, if you are a friend of PCS, then I will continue to play nice in the sandbox. So uh, Sideshow is a good example. Uh, they have always been great to us, and I appreciate all their help and insight and feedback that they've always given us. So uh, they are a FOP. Uh, uh, so that's a good example. But there's others that it's it's gloves off and on like Donkey Kong. <laughs> yeah, I, I think when that happened, I did reach out to you, not yes, like kind of did. ask. Because um, 
but it wasn't the company that you originally thought at the like the the one that hit me tipped me over wasn't the company I know. You thought? So it's everyone's uh, favorite um variant releasing batman <laughs> statue company yeah uh to keep it vague enough um but not yeah, really vague no no not vague at all but yeah so the chrome is i mean obviously you've got the two poses so um you got like the one from the like, that's kind of the pawn pawn shop pose a yep. little bit there where he's got like is that, is that gasoline i smell and then yep. um that's like um uh, I think I've, there's a bit where he's like, do, do officers, I thought officers say freeze. Shoot, yeah. if you will, Officer Brad. Yeah, that's that, that part, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, very cool. Uh, we very have cool. changed this a little bit. Uh, we are now going to do one with the... I haven't decided if we're doing a swap-out torso or two different variants, but there will be one with the jacket version. Of course. Hmm. So I think we'll have one with the arms down without... Without the jacket, and then the probably the jacket version with the arms out. Oops, zoomed in a bit too much there. Don't know what happened there. Yeah, no, it's cool. It's very yeah. cool. I'm, 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 I'm dreading the the new movie. I've, I've not even watched the trailer. <laughs> and um, I, I actually read something quite sad the other day because obviously with all the drama about this about this film, the um, the director basically doesn't have anything to do with it anymore so when mm. all the drama happened the director just stepped totally away oh, uh, right. alex um Praris, Praris, i think his name is he like directed dark city um gods of egypt oh, uh, and a bunch of other stuff but he he basically he, there was an interview about um the 4k version that's being released very soon or has been released now and he just mm. said i had nothing to do with it i don't want anything to do with that movie after what happened uh, mm -hmm. It just brings back bad memories. That's yeah, quite yeah. very, very mm -hmm. unfortunate. And it's the same as when you see the video of um, the guy who plays the villain, who's in um, Michael. I can't remember his last name now, but he's the same. He's they, they just obviously it would have been very traumatic. What, what yeah, happened yeah. if you're on yeah. the set? So, yes, yeah, sad really. But again, with the new remake, God, <laughs> <laughs> I love this film. I absolutely love this. It's one of my favorite films. I even called my dog Draven. Oh, nice. Mm. Yeah. It isn't uh, nice. It's a stupid name for a dog. Don't encourage it. Well, it's even worse because my girlfriend ends up calling him Dee Dee, which is like an old woman name. So she's like, come on, Dee Dee. And he's like, oh, God. No, she does call him Dee Dee, didn't she? Yeah. It's almost yeah, like an old lady. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this then goes on to the, um, the Halloween piece as well that you were speaking about uh, with yeah. all the different versions of that. And uh, yeah. Yeah, that one sold out as well. That gold, and that one comes with the gold coin. Oh yeah, and also you got the uh, the the lantern as well. It comes with yeah. the light up lantern. Um, very cool. Yeah. Which which ones are the ones? So you've done a bunch in one third, and then you've done some in the quarter scale as well. And yep. but you've done them in both scales. Which which are the ones that you've done in both scales and in third scale? So. Uh, so Myers, we've done in third quarter and now half scale. Uh, yeah. Ghostface, we've done in third quarter, and then we're doing a half scale this year. That's uh, on your list, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. So a lot of them we try when we have the license or we can, we try to do multiple scales, but not the same sculpt. Uh, so we like to do them years apart. Uh, because there are collectors that only do quarter, some only do third, uh, some do half, and some are just Myers pan fans, period, and they'll get all three. Uh, but we don't want them to have like the same statue and three different scales, right? So each one we've done done a little bit different throughout. I do love them uh, storytelling bases that you do in the film. Yeah, that's, that's what I was going to say. Is the storytelling bases are the ones of the core scale because yep. you know they're, they're, they're the ones I like, and especially you did that on the American Psycho piece as well. Which yep. is fantastic. Yep. Um, and then, okay, this is your teaser as well. So th these are all kind of. I took all the uh, pictures from your site and from um, uh, your social media as well. So these are then the teasers for uh, the howling that's coming. Yes. Yep. Uh, that's third scale, and he is ginormous. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I, I don't. His hands are huge, and yeah. he's holding that arm. I don't think I've got that picture, but we did have it on the chat recently where there was the arm and someone was holding it. It was like obscene. Yeah, oh, yeah. There was one. There was one as well for um, 
pumpkin head as well, which was yep. absolutely yeah, crazy. Massive and all. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're basically half scale size. <laughs> and, and again, this like going on, I mean, like, you guys have kind of become the the horror, you know, the the, the 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 company to release the horror pieces, and you're releasing like quite obscure lines as well. I mean, yep. Killer Clowns has got a big cult following, and um, you know, I've seen the movie several times, and it is uh, it's quite stupid, it's a stupid movie. I mean, I love eighties <laughs> horror, but like, you know, you watch it back, and it's, it was it's quite a risky one to do. You know? Yeah. Well, this, um, this was a this was another uh, this was almost like another Chun Li. Uh, not everybody disagreed with me, but there was a lot of people in the studio that didn't think Killer Clowns would have legs. And again, the thought that was going through my head was Killer Clowns and It are the two movies that made me scared of clowns when I was younger. So I'm like, let's do it. Clown House. Oz's Clown House. Oh, yeah. if, you, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen that. Have you seen Clown uh, House? Uh. Uh-uh. That's the one that God, that's, 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 that's quite a scary one. No, not it's not like it's not it's not it's like it's I mean it. the reason why the reason why that in particular is, is a little bit more realistic is about a group of psychiatric patients that escape hospital and oh. the circus are in town and they kill the clowns in the middle of the night when they're all sort of getting unchanged. And then they dress up as they nick their clothes and they torment these kids that are like uh, who parents are away. Oh, wow. So it's a bit more, it's not really like, um, you know, like this is a, like aliens yeah, and then it's yeah, a little yeah. bit like that's from a different dimension. So, I mean, I think with us, we were a bit like, shit, that could happen. It could totally happen. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, did you let break, break into the house? And I say Sam Brockwell gets done straight away, I think. I think he's like one of his first movies. He um, is, yeah. He's, a kid. he's quite young, isn't he? He's a boy. Yeah. Again, with this, I mean, this was one when you released it. I was a bit, I was a bit like, I, that's that's cool and i really hope it does well because then you're going to see more kind of unique lines but yeah. that's going to be a hard push especially in this climate and i did see something where um was it martin canali he actually posted something about this did he work yeah. on this or his partner or his friend worked on it or something uh you talking about martin martin yeah martin canali you would call yeah, him. He, no he sculpted these wow yeah, yeah. that's yeah, yeah. That's huge. I mean, because um, again, there's always that thing about people saying, well, he's with Sideshow and he's on retainer with Sideshow and that's all he's going to do. And to see him kind of go to another work with another company, that's that's a, that's something big uh, yep. to get him on board. Um, yeah, but yeah, I remember seeing him post it. I was just like, wow, okay. Oh, yeah. Are these doing all right? Are they? Uh, and are uh, these... Jumbo is actually almost sold out. Awesome. So, wow. Yeah, yeah so no, nah, they're, doing, they're doing really well. And then the uh i probably pronouncing this wrong chiodo brothers the ones that created the killer clowns. Chiodo brothers they did killer yeah. clowns and they did critters as well yeah so they they love them uh yeah. they actually reached out uh about them uh to us so it's pretty oh, awesome that's massive that's yeah, awesome yeah. does that Absolutely. mean we're going to probably potentially see critters huh see who? Would we potentially see critters oh Critters. Oh, critters! Actually, I should reach out to him and check on critters. Because I actually watched, I watched critters literally last week, and again, when I put it on, I was literally thinking, "This is going to be so bad." I haven't seen this in twenty-five years. Um, it's going to be dreadful. And I put it on, and I was actually like, "This is this is actually all right." You know, this actually holds up all right. You know, yeah, but you got like, your 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 tolerance for these type of films sucks. It's, you're <laughs> like, you know, you you like well bad. The stuff that you can sit through and watch just bemuses me that your brain can function. Honestly, I'd sh I'd shoot myself in the head if I had to sit through half of the shit that we talk about. It's really like not okay. Like I'm, oh, there's nice. no way that. Yeah, you are. Same director as Jeepers Creepers. I didn't know that. Wow, that's no, the one as well. You should do is the uh, the creeper. Uh, uh, again, so I won't do the creeper because of the yeah because of what happened creep. later on with the director wasn't it yes yes I mean yeah, I got okay. I got two little girls uh yeah. so yeah that's people have been asking that now I can get behind yep a moral compass there not about money yep not about not about pleasing anybody that it goes against my moral compass you know what and yep. after this me and you're going to be good friends very very close yep. I might replace you. You're more sort of handsome Hebrew looking dude than the one I've got. I might have to trade you up. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
It's not Hebrew. What are you talking about? I know, but look, his beard is trimmed. His hair is styled. He doesn't look homeless like you. I mean, honestly, you're not inside. <laughs> yet again. Yeah, yeah, I know you've had a new baby. I know you're not getting any sleep. But man the fuck up. Handle your shit. <laughs> I work from home. I just like, yeah, I don't care how much. Um, yeah. What was I going to say as well? So, so again, being a big um, kind of horror fan myself, some of the ones I want to kind of ask about and this will be me kind of hijacking a little bit now and there have been some questions about this so um would you, would there be a potential for something like dark man um maniac cop um i'm trying to think of some other something like i'm trying to think of some iconic ones from some of the zombie films maybe something from dawn of the yes. dead yeah um, so dark man yes i wouldn't mind doing uh some of the zombies from the old night of the living dead like uh was it tar man uh tar man oh, would be good. Yeah, yeah uh yeah. so yeah no those are definitely definitely on our list uh what about dawn, dawn of the dead yes mm -hmm. yep yeah that's the one which like um when i was about six years old um i was at my grandma's and literally my dad called me into the room he goes hey come and have a look at this and i walked in and it was the part where they're filling up the helicopter. Yeah, uh, the zombie walks up the crate, gets the top of his head cut off. Yeah, I had nightmares forever, and mm -hmm. I think that sort of made me a bit, a bit demented in the head since then. To be honest, but yeah. <laughs> well, well, if it if it makes you feel better, I still won't live close to a cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> Safest place to be, though. Was that is that is that from Pet That's Cemetery? From no, no, no! From the the original ones, where the, the yeah, the, the original with the guy with the glasses, yeah, I, the guy with the know, glasses, I, I, the woman. Like I never. Like and it just never like zombies and things like that. I think it's just never, never appealed to me at all like, to watch them or anything like that. I even did a never crow quote there, but when everyone missed, but it's fine. He says about <laughs> the cemetery, he goes the safest place to be. Uh, <laughs> but maniac, maniac cop as well. That's that's uh, maybe I wasn't strong on that one, but I'd yeah. have to do my so that'd be an example of one where I'd have to do my research uh, um, for that one. Also, how is the Army of Darkness uh, diorama coming along? uh printed going off to paint on either tomorrow or monday i think there's a couple wow. more things that need to be finished and then uh it's off to paint uh, be, i mean that, that'll be quite um a hard paint are you kind of going for more of um, a realistic look or are yeah you so that's that the question? this Comedy one was squir this one, yeah this one was squirrely and the reason i'm saying squirrely is because we were going with the look from the poster, yeah. which isn't necessarily a super realistic look. Uh, even the the outfit is different on the poster than what he wears in the the movie. Uh, went back and forth multiple times. The piece probably took a lot longer than it should have because of that. Uh, some of that is my fault. I own up to it when I fuck up, and that was definitely one of my fuck ups of. Uh, waffling going back and forth on trying to make it what he was in the movie versus a poster. Uh, but I think we have a, a good balance uh, of realistic, but with the poster outfit, with the poster pose, uh, yeah. et cetera. Uh, so I think, I think we found a good balance and I think that's going to be a, be a good piece. Uh, another example of kind of fun, finding that balance is the uh, Ninja Turtles that we're doing. Uh, we're doing the little manhole cover uh, from the poster with the turtles, uh, yeah. uh, the turtles underground. From the nineties film. Yes. Nineteen ninety. Yeah. So uh, that image was basically digitally created, uh, and those turtles aren't necessarily exactly the turtles that are in the movie. Uh, yeah. So we had to find the right balance to uh, for that piece. So that was another example of of one where we have to find that balance and we're not going to please everybody, uh, but yeah. people are going to compare it to the poster. So that's what we want to get closest to. Yeah. That's the funny thing with like um, Army of Darkness is they used, we, I, I used to have a VHS, which I wish I kept, where it had the cover on it with the woman and then you reversed it and it had the cover where he's got his hands up like this with a gun and the chainsaw and a red background. And mm. he's that really artist, shred, like a boy, he's he's well, shredded. Roughly. Yeah, he's like yeah, shredded. It's boring. Fun, it's, real. Like, it's, it's boring. It's like an art. Yeah, I know, thing. I know. I'm, I'm saying thing. that's that's another thing there. But that was the best thing about, I mean, I know that was 90s, but the best thing about like the 80s was all those horror covers and like the artwork yeah. on those. I, I used to love that. Yeah. Absolutely love that. 
Um, any more um, plans for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Legends line? Uh, yes. So we have Mikey that's being sculpted right now. Uh, we have Crane. Is that the one third line? Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm excited for that Crane, man. Yeah, that Crane, Crane is... is for me, yeah. Crane is the most criminally underused character. I mean, he, oh, yeah. he, every statue company should make him that has got a license. It's the coolest looking fucking character ever. Yeah. Like. Yep. Yeah, no, nah, the, the Keurig brothers are going to knock that out the park. They're sculpting that one, and it's... I mean, that thing's going to be amazing. Rabbit, I remember him. Christ. Yeah, what about the rabbit guy from uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? What's he called? Um, uh, he he is on or... our... He's on our list. He's not yeah. in development, but he is on our list. Uh, I'm just going through some of these questions here. So yeah, will absolutely. PCS uh, be at New York Comic Con or San yes. Diego Comic Con? Both. Okay. And we'll be um, at C2E2 uh, in April, end of April. Okay. That's cool. Uh, yeah. Can you please ask, Gant, how close will the production of the Vampire and Diorama be to the prototype in terms of paint and sculpt? Uh, same or better. So our mission statement at PCS is that our production needs to be the same or better than the prototype, uh, which is one of the reasons why sometimes we change sculpts during production because we feel like it makes it better. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the plan. And then uh, does the Predator license and, and hinted include the one for Dutch? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, or okay, then any news about the uh, Predator Alien line? Uh, also, plead the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That means legally uh, we're not going to talk about that. Yeah. yeah. What does your Star Wars license cover? Any scales? Uh, so I will give two because you're going to show it on the on the oh, yeah. uh, the pre-orders to come. Uh, it includes third scale, uh, and it also includes our fine art line, uh, like our Carnage. Uh, oh, wow. okay. and we have a third one that I that has never been done for well, our fine art line has never been done for Star Wars and I don't know if there's been a third scale either but our third category within uh, Star Wars has never been done and it is it's going to be awesome uh, it'll come out uh, the pre-order still be this year uh, but it's 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 going to be awesome that's interesting to know now. <laughs> I'm not be excited about that to be going into Star Wars. That's a big, that's a big coup for you, man, to get that license. Oh yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That's... Tell me about how that. Tell me about how that went. What, was that like a, a long term plan of yours? Uh, yes. Uh, Star Wars has. It's a been... great story, by the way. Yeah, Star Wars has been tell on me. my mind for the whole time we've since we've owned. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a big geek too, and and Star Wars is is. It, it's what got me into the the business in the first place was was Star Wars. So it was something that was uh, near and dear to my heart as as well. So it, it's a big deal for us to get the license. Oh yeah, uh, that was. I told Mark and the the rest of the team that was probably my hardest pitch in my career, and that's that's going not just PCS but. But my banking career, the pitching, whole world. yeah, right. I mean, I covered Fortune 500 companies and had to pitch CEOs that are making tens, twenties of millions of dollars a year and trying to convince them of my idea. And none of them uh, were as important or as as difficult as the Star Wars one. Uh, yeah, I've I heard stories in, about that. Yeah, and I was I was persistent, uh, respectful. Uh, and a meeting that was supposed to be an hour lasted almost nine hours. Shit. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Uh, and that must mean you were doing something right for, to be tolerated yeah. for that long. It means you were doing well. well. Correct. Correct. Uh, and it, it worked out. Uh, we ended up getting it, signing it. Uh, we've been sitting on it for a while. I'm I'm the type of I'm not going to say or announce until the ink is dry. Right. Anything can be pulled until the contract yeah. is signed. So it was like I'm not yeah. letting out a freaking peep uh, until that that deal is signed. Uh, 
uh, and that's and that's what it was. So, uh, yeah, I am extremely grateful uh, for the team at Lucas for giving us the opportunity. Uh, and I think it's we're going to put together some really cool stuff uh, with Star Wars. Tell Is everybody about what uh, fi fine art entails. So fine art. So this was another uh, shit or shower moment uh, <laughs> of ideas of trying to do something different, right? So everybody has done a character on a base. Everybody has done a character interacting with the base. Uh, but I, I was feeling like the we needed something a little bit more creative, uh, something a little leaning more into the art even more. Uh, yeah. And telling a story, but also having, like, I, I wanted I wanted these pieces to be, you look at them and you can't stop looking, right? You, you get carried yeah. around the piece. Uh, you almost want to put the thing on a, uh, I'll just call Turn it time. a... A, a turntable because I don't think Lazy Susan is PC anymore. Uh, so well, we still use it, man. Yeah. This is right tight, and Lazy yeah. Susan is what it's called. Okay, I was gonna but say we're turning. You say turntable. I'm glad uh, you said it that. It bothers my wife saying, every time yeah, yeah. anybody says Lazy Susan. It bothers her. the hell out of her. Yeah, yeah. No, oh, that's hilarious. Uh, but I, I think it's mostly it. to do with the fact that Alex says it more yeah. than anything else. Oh, that's hilarious. Uh, but I wanted like a full 360 view. Uh, so that's when I ended up coming up with the idea of, OK, what if we did like a life size bust, uh, but then do like full scenes, a story like all the way around it. Right. People have done busts. People have done multiple Diorama. characters on diorama. Yeah. Right. But yeah. nobody has done a told a story and made it artistic. Made it creative, uh, not just a whole bunch of characters in there just doing stuff, but like the characters around the 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 bus, the life size bus are actually integral or integrated into the piece, so it still feels like one piece, but you keep getting carried all the way around it. Yeah, yeah I mean uh, this this started with your carnage concept, correct? Yes. Yes. Right now, that carnage concept you took a lot of reference from comic books Absolutely. from. Even game, game covers. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, I mean, is, will we be seeing the same type of thing in regards to this fine art Star Wars line? Will you be taking oh. different references from all across the board? Oh, yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. So with the, with the Carnage one, so when I had this idea, uh, I first went to uh, the Keurig brothers that are on our on our team because uh, I knew they could bring, bring this little brain fart that was in my head to life, which they did. Uh, but at the same time, I went to Mark. I was like, hey, I have this idea. What story should we do first? And Mark was like, Maximum Carnage, like within seconds. Maximum Carnage. Do it. Great choice. Yep. Uh, and then I started doing my research, going through the comics, and I, was, I started sending basically like scenes and blips uh, from the different books uh, to the Keurig brothers. Say, this would be cool. This is something we can include. And then they came back about, what if we include this and do this? And uh, it ended up turning out a collaborative effort yes absolutely absolutely that's exciting man i mean I, I think you i think you really did something new there with that with that with that carnage as well that fine art uh, line is it's nuts I, I was massively impressed when i seen that yeah we myself, have a, we have another undertaking that's now getting we're getting close to like a year in development on this i don't know if you guys have heard of uh chris cooksey uh, but he's a fine artist that does uh, like uh, wall sculptures that are really, really intricate. Uh, he did like an album cover for uh, for Ti as well. Uh, but but look him up. Uh, we're actually we've actually partnered with him to do some pieces uh, in his style. And we're doing a Transformer piece first, and then we're doing a Spider-Man piece. Uh, oh, first reveal, Spider-Man piece uh in the chris cooksey style uh as well uh and i'm i'm super excited about those like that that's going to continue to put us in that fine art storytelling like a full your eye keeps moving type of realm uh i'm pretty sure there's gonna be people that are gonna start copying us because we're doing something so different and out the box uh but we can always say we were the the first to do it and we've got copycats behind Sorry, us. what was uh what was the artist's name uh chris cooksey all with k so k-r-i-s 
K U K. I'm assuming he's like his stuff is wall mounted art. Yeah, uh, he's done a couple tabletops things as well, uh, but a lot of it is uh, on the wall. Uh, I'm cool. leaning towards sticking with on the wall because everybody already has stuff on the shelf, right? What's the next place that we can start filling out? And that's the wall, being able to hang something. Uh, but yeah, that's his his work. I mean, it is freaking amazing, the level of detail and artistry that goes into his pieces. And that's what we plan oh, on yeah, well, yeah. bringing into, bring into this. It's very intricate. Yep. Jesus Christ. Oh, wow, well, yeah. So imagine that with Spider-Man and a whole bunch of different scenes and webs intermingled and going throughout like that. Oh, it's gonna be freaking badass. Careful, you'll give Alex a few wet dreams. <laughs> so yeah, our, our <laughs> next well. line we're doing so for our fine art bust, uh, we have Hulk coming out uh, in May. Uh, actually, Gladiator Hulk, I should say. Uh, and then we have our Vader fine art bust that'll be in June. Uh, wow! Yeah, that thing Bill is. Anderson, you better be listening, bro. <laughs> um, just going back to some of the kind of questions we have here. So, um, what's coming up in the Transformer line? Can you make uh, Bruticus? Bruticus? I don't know those. Uh, I want to do him next. He'd probably be a while. Uh, but we have Optimus coming up, uh, I think, either May or June uh, for pre-order. Uh, and then we'll probably in that same museum line, uh, but we'll have Unicron coming, uh, Unicron on the throne. Uh, that piece will be coming. And then we'll probably do Soundwave next uh okay. afterwards uh and then we're doing a uh we're actually doing a megatron megatron fine art bust uh what happened well. to the um uh the cell shaded line so that was probably one of my favorite lines uh yeah. to be honest uh yeah the, pro the problem was that people didn't support it uh and it's it's quite maybe expensive some, to do the yeah as well. th yeah so maybe some of it was was my fault for not educating the collectors more on the pieces, yeah. right? So they, a lot of collectors will look at it and say, oh, it's not, it's not difficult. The sculpt isn't a whole bunch of <laughs> difficult parts. Uh, it's basic shapes, but they don't understand that that cell shading yeah. paint is more expensive than a super complicated transformer. It's like three times the price because you have to yeah. do go over a lot. Um, yep. I think what happened as well was you guys did like um, the smaller line. So you did the um, Optimus Prime. Uh, did you do the Megatron? And then you know, you no. did Soundwave. Oh, you did Soundwave. Yep. Yeah. But then I think what happened was is then you jumped to um, Star, Starscream and um, the price jumped up quite a lot because those pieces were huge. And I think they were shown in New York Comic Con when I was there. And I think it was that that was one of the factors as well because you. I think you had a smaller scale for the um, Optimus Prime and the Soundwave, and then you jumped up to a bigger scale for the um, Starscream. No, so I think we did it the opposite. I think we did uh, oh. Starscream before we yeah, did Starscream the Starscream's little. Yeah. So we, no, no, we did Scar Starscream big before we jumped to the littles. So oh, the, okay. yeah, yeah. The reason we ended up jumping to the littles was because the bigs weren't selling as well. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. And the problem is, even with the littles, that's still an expensive ass paint job. Uh, I mean, we didn't make any money on any of those. Uh, mm -hmm. I would have loved to keep going because, I mean, that is childhood for me all day, every yeah. day. Yeah. Uh, Probably for Alex is as well, actually. He was really big into Transformers when we were kids. Yeah. Oh, I love, I love that sound wave. That sound wave is amazing. Yeah. It's really nice. Yeah. Uh, this is actually an interesting concept. This, this, your Vampirella piece. Yep. This is this is really really. It's quite sexy. This for me. So this was a. Anthony is on Facebook, and Anthony is in a Vampirella group because we've done Vampirella before, and it popped up in my feed a Mike Crumb uh, cover, which was this, and I was like, oh shit, we got to make that. 
like all day. We got to make that into a statue. Uh, so I reached out to Mike and he was very supportive and on board. And we're like, all right, let's do it. It, it turned out freaking awesome. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, I think the you, there's a question there about Unicron, but Unicron does sit on a throne, doesn't he? He doesn't. Uh, he's huge, but there's there's this artwork of him uh, basically like just seated, uh, and that's kind of what we're in nothing. Yeah, uh, and basically with like two, two planets in his hand because he's so huge. Very right, uh, cool. Yeah, so we got inspiration from that, and that that Unicron piece is actually in the Chris Cooksey piece that we're doing. But what we decided to do was do the Chris Cooksey wall piece, but then also at the same time offer a stand, excuse me, standalone Unicron on a throne piece as well. Wow. I don't know which one uh, I like. Out of you. I think I like them. I think I can, you can mix these two heads up, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They swap out heads. Yeah, I, I sort of want one feeding and one hissing. That's how mm. I would have it. I think that's a fantastic one, balance. One way she's doing that on the, the head, she's she's feeding, and then the other one's looking up. I think, yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, that's how I would do it. Yeah, no, nope. looks quite uh, good, man. Really, you're good. asking about the uh, red bandanas, uh, for the turtles. Yes, so, uh, uh, so I had to, so no promises yet. Uh, <laughs> but the our Leo didn't have a swap out head. Uh, but I made sure that uh, the basically the bandana uh, around the bottom of the eye is keyed in so that if we get the okay to do red bandanas, we can do it for all of them. Uh, and how would it be? Would it be like a separate bust or? No, that we'd probably, it's, I haven't decided like how to do it. If we'll do like bus or if we'll just do sell like the heads in a four pack, I guess a three pack because Raph already has a yeah. red bandana. But basically, do like a three pack that you can just buy separately. I just have to get approval for it. I I yeah, assume that. The, the, sorry. I assume the um the red bandana thing. You have to go to a different source to get permission for that. Then. Yes. Yep. That's, That's where the issue lies, right. isn't it? It's because it's it's sort of it's been through a few different connotations and yeah. hands. And to go, you're going right back to the. That's the Japanese, the early Japanese stuff, right? Yeah, well, no, it would still be uh, be Laird and them. Yeah, we would we'd be able to do it. It's just getting the approval to sell just heads. Is what we would have. That's the the issue. I think it would be that you yeah likely you know to say to make it cost effective, and then also you can reach out to other collectors. It would be busts. I'm, I'm assuming. Uh, yeah. Some of the questions are more. Um, any chance of doing a Lost Boys lineup? Uh, I hope I hope one day. Yes, absolutely. That'd be great. Um, the... Funny, me and my wife were talking about Corey Haim the other day. Oh God! <laughs> There's a documentary. Right? The, that film, the, documentary that the, two, plastic, man. The, the documentary the two Corries don't watch it. No, I won't. Corey, <laughs> Fillman, Corey Fillman's well fucked up, but he he just like yeah, just don't listen to him really. Um, would you? Producer Star Killer from the Force Unleashed. I see his name quite a lot. I don't know the Force Unleashed, but that's oh, the no. game you played from the original. It's from the game, but there, isn't there canon for like in books or something about Star Killer? I think he's like ridiculously strong, isn't he? Or is he a clone or something? No, I know him only from the game, but I'm sure that, that, that there's stuff before that. <laughs> I, don't, uh, I don't really just know. Actually, you've already answered, but uh, Yust is asking any creator original line stuff coming out at some point. So that would be more the... Uh, yes, I hope so. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, I'm working mm. working on that uh, with some friends of mine. Uh, friends of ours. Yes, exactly. Uh, so, yes, that is the, the goal. Absolutely. Um, I'm not sure if it's... And when, I, and when I say working with, with some friends of mine, it's their stuff that they yeah. put together and worked on. Uh, I do have a couple. Sorry. I do have a couple ideas of something I want to develop on our side as well. So we have a couple, couple coals in the fire on that front. But absolutely. Any chance of a WWE lineup coming back? Uh, I would love to, but that was another one that. Other than, money. Yeah, did not. Other than Warrior, like Warrior sold. Yeah. Uh, rock soul, and, and and you put the iconic characters in, man. 
Hulk Hogan, Undertaker, you don't if they're not selling, you can't really go much bigger. Exactly. Yep. So you, you know you, you put that, out the, the big guns, man. Yeah, the fact that Hulk was not profitable for us is a problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It really is. So, uh, I mean, I grew up on WWF, so me too. Me too. Uh, I wanted this line to be strong and keep going. We may do it on keep the like smaller PVC going, like doing like a tent scale. Uh, we're gonna try that out, uh, but like the that would be fun. Scale. That's a fun, it's a fun yeah. idea. Yeah. Maybe some diorama stuff, some iconic scenes, yeah, some exactly. sweet music, maybe. Yeah, you missed well, out the, the main. I mean, you missed you missed you missed out the main. I mean, come on now. Yeah, you, you did the rock. The rocks, the rocks, a big one. Did he do all right? Did rock do okay? Yeah, rock did okay. Yes. Yeah, because rock. Well, rock's in, big. Uh, in New York Comic Con, in New York Comic Con, that rock looked insane. Yep. Yeah, that, that that prototype was you crazy. Not, you, I mean, you didn't I get Austin, man, did you? you? Didn't do Austin. We did. Austin. Austin did, did decent. Yeah, yeah. yeah Austin did. did decent. Not great, but decent. Yeah. Uh, but like Undertaker, man. Uh, Hogan. Right then, answer. Come on, if you're a, if you're a WWE fan, who's who's the man? Who's the main guy? Who's the best for you? Oh, for me. Uh, yeah. So I was a warrior guy. Ultimate Warrior was my dude back when I was young, and that's yeah. why we did, that's why we did him first. Uh, but from a from a mouth perspective, Rock and Austin all freaking day like that era was. Just the yeah, actual yeah, yeah, yeah. That was just hands down amazing. And then you throw DX in there, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I was always, I was always Triple H, Triple H, nice. my guy. The game. <laughs> That's what it's got to be. the game. But yeah, I mean, it's funny uh, as well because some of the stories about the Ultimate Warrior behind the scenes are actually heartbreaking. Yeah. You know, like honestly, like what you know, the guy, like he, he couldn't wrestle bar like three, four minutes. <laughs> any um any chance of any 80s or 90s anime anime pieces being worked on uh so i have been working on that for three years now so uh i will say eventually because i don't give up uh <laughs> just like star wars it eventually happened mm -hmm. uh so yes eventually yes uh i wanted to do a afro samurai i wanted to do a ninja scroll uh, uh, Vampire Hunter D was my shit back yeah. in the day. Yeah, uh, so that's really rough. hard to get that one. That's really, yes. really hard yes. to get. Uh, Figueroa yeah. got that, and it was like for them to get it was really, really tough. Like, yeah, really yeah tough. A, few, a few of them Figueroa boys are missing their pinkies now doing that deal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, idiot, uh, what I call Scout Art the Clown, I think that's from Terrifier. Yeah, yeah. Eventually, we'll hit that as well. That's fucked up. That film. Both of them are. I haven't the watched it, one. Yet, but I, I tried to watch it. and It was like really creepy right at the beginning. I was like, oh yeah. I'm the second kidding. one, the, the first one's like just more gory and like really like uh, bad gore. Yeah. Um, and then the second one, they take it to the next level, and then he's got like this imaginary friend as like a little girl, and it just yeah. gets really weird. Nothing happens, yeah. but it's just like this real bizarre relationship they have yeah um it's just strange but yeah the people told me oh yeah it's, it's really creepy it's really scary it's just okay. it's just like like shock value stuff they do um there's a part where they like skin someone and yeah quite bad but, thanks yeah. yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> um so will the 90s turtles be one third scale uh no comment <laughs> <laughs> i've got a question i'm gonna i'm gonna just say I'm, when we when we do it people are gonna flip their shit i'll <laughs> i'll i'll leave it at that like it's it's gonna be awesome okay this is one that's on the screen now so so this is one that's quite unique as well that you've done so you've got done like the michael jordan statue uh of the the, the iconic pose and this one is you know one that I don't think people were expecting to see, really. So, yeah, you know, I didn't did even you know this was done by you. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yep. uh, obviously, it's a very unique pose. Um, a lot of engineering going into this. So, I mean, oh, yeah, yeah. Do you want to go through the journey of this one? Because that must be yeah, a hard so, license to get as well. Yeah, yeah. So, this was another one that probably took two years of back and forth and a lot of pestering. 
uh, because it's it's not only just a license with Jordan, it's also a license with NBA. So this is actually a dual license uh, for this one. Actually three. Uh, Nike too. Oh yeah, Nike too. So actually sure. three licenses right, yeah. in this piece. Uh, Bird is two licenses as well. But with this one, uh, like I said, my, my dad literally has a Jordan room. Uh, he is a huge Jordan fan. Uh, and I would say like growing up, like who I am today is because of my dad. Uh, he was like 21 years retired air force, then another 25 years at the post office. Uh, and I still remember to this day when I was growing up, he would go to work at the post office at 6 PM until 12 PM the next day, seven days a week, sleep for four hours, wake up, coach my football team, cook dinner, and then go back to work seven days a week one week off a year for vacation, that's it. And that's where my work ethic, my drive came from. And I was like, I have to eventually do a Jordan statue for his room. Uh, and that's kind of what wow. drove me to getting getting this piece. Uh, I, I'm still trying to work on like uh, getting autographs for like five to 10 uh, of an exclusive. And I would love to bring my dad into that so he can meet him as well. Uh, but this piece was more, this was definitely a passion piece and not a, for me, but more for my dad type piece. That's beautiful, man. That's, oh. I watched the, uh, I watched the, I think the Netflix series, I thought it was absolutely mind blowing. It's probably the best sports documentary. I've oh watched. yeah. That was a good one. Yep. Mm -hmm. Is it the last, the last last dance, last dance It's the best sports documentary I've ever, I've ever sat through ever. Yeah. So this is an example of people don't know. And what I mean by that is I saw multiple posts where people are like, he doesn't have a tongue out. That's a that's a that's a loss for, for me. I can't I'm not going to get it. You guys totally messed up by not putting his tongue out. Why did you guys make that decision? Because we're not allowed to put his tongue out. Literally, our license. We cannot do Jordan with his tongue out. That is not possible at all. Uh, our original concept had it. Uh, and we were told no. So people don't realize that stuff and start going off on tangents of bashing the company and saying we're stupid and all this. They don't just they don't understand. Uh, and it's sad because we are collectors uh, and we have been doing this for a while now. And I would think we know what we like as collectors, which usually translates to what other people as collectors would like. And yeah. we know as a Jordan fan, you want Jordan with his tongue out, but we're not allowed to. We just can't. Uh, but people didn't understand that, sadly. Yeah, I mean, that'd be, uh, you know, there'd be a lot of hopes to jump through just to get to this far as it is. And there's exactly. so many, there's so many um, requisites for what you cannot do. Mm -hmm. Like, don't even go near X, Y, and Z. But it's, uh, again, Part of it is just being a gentleman and asking the right question, isn't it? And saying, you know, is is there any reason that you yep. didn't do the tongue, or is this, you know, I, I'm surprised you didn't. You know, there's a polite way that we should all speak to each other, yep. really, on the first instance. There, unfortunately, like I said, and I'll quote my, Mike Tyson every day of my life. You know, social media has made people very, you know, too comfortable about talking shit and not getting punched in the mouth. You yep. know, at the end of the day. It's very, very true, you know, and, and I, I think it represents society as a whole. You know, these days, I don't know what it's like over there where you're from, but over here, um, socially, um, it's never been worse. Yeah. Like going out and like dealing with people, it's like they don't know how to speak anymore. They don't know how to be polite, you know. I take yeah. my twins, like, you know, shopping and everything else, and like the people just are unbelievable. Yep. But just in general, it's, and I, I feel, I, I still, I think social media is part of that. I think we should all try to talk to each other a little better for, on the first instance. Yes. You know, don't, you don't have to stay polite if you're getting spoken to badly, but I, yeah. I think in the first instance, you should ask the question because you've got an answer. You know, yeah. you, you're not allowed to. That's yeah. the answer. It's very quick and easy and simple and fixed within three seconds. Yeah. So don't fall out before it starts because then you miss the conversation. Exactly. It's like I always try to give people the benefit of the doubt, uh, especially when first meeting people for that reason, right? It's, I, I I feel like I don't have time for the shenanigans, as my wife would say, and all the negativity. It's like I got so much going on. Everybody does. It's like, why focus on the negativity or treating people bad when you can just it, it takes a couple seconds to be nice. It's not that, yeah, that totally hard. Uh, and like I said, 
I get knocked on by my wife multiple times or all the time. She's a psychologist. I lose every argument. Uh, but <laughs> I'm not very emotional. Uh, I don't I don't let stuff get to me uh, very often uh, because I feel like and this may be some of it's my wife. Some of it's what I heard from one of my coworkers at the bank. And it was a weird story. And for some reason, it stuck with me. Uh, he was telling me the story about his brother who was like from Miami, Cuban dude. Uh, and he was like a big meathead. And he was just telling the story. And he was like, this guy came up to me and was talking crap. And he was like, you don't make me uncomfortable. I'll make you uncomfortable. And for some reason, like that little phrase, like turned a switch in my head to where I was like, I'm not letting other people affect my mood or what I'm doing, because at that point you're giving them power. Right. So for me, it's no, just ignore it. Don't pay attention to it. You're not going to affect my life. I got way too much stuff to worry about other than what somebody says. Uh, and it takes two seconds to be nice to somebody and you may make their day just just being nice. Yeah. Right? So you're very good point. So, it's like when yeah. you do deal with that kind of drama online and it's it's one of the things which we've, we've mentioned quite a lot of times and when we started out you know we had you know a hundred views on a video or something and we just get so excited about it and then we would have you know 10 thumbs up and when we got our first thumbs down um we kind of like had this big Christ like me. phone call we had this like yeah, crisis yeah. meeting about like you know we phoned each other and we we're like we, we, we are, oh, watched the video back and we we're like it's because of you, you said guys? this fuck you George you fucking said that you, you're the <laughs> one who got us the red phone you know and we had this big conversation about it and then like as the years have gone on as well you kind of got to a point where you know we get like thousands and thousands of comments and then there would be like one comment saying um, like fuck you this whatever whatever. And we would like focus on it. And then it was like, um, I was listening to a podcast with like Kevin Hart and uh, Joe Rogan. And obviously they're on the whole next level, but they're talking about it. They're talking about how that, that one moment they, they switched and they realized that they're giving too much time for these negative people. They're scrolling through going, you know, great podcast, Joe. Yeah, love that. Love, love, love what you did about that. Love how you brought out on that person. Fuck you, Joe, you big headed cunt. Oh my God, I'm going to reply now. And they said like, you know, once they realize that moment of giving those people that power and giving those people that response, they make it worse. And then they realize it's like, oh, no, no more. I'm not doing that yeah. anymore. We, we still realize that. And there yeah. are times where it's quite fun. One of my one of my, my greatest moments, which I literally <laughs> laughed myself to sleep, was um, some guy <laughs> said a comment about, I like it was a Doctor Who review that someone brought something to our house, and I misspelled Dalek. And the guy's like, it's... Dalek, you illiterate prick, and blah 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 blah. I went this whole rant about it and how iconic Doctor Who is, and I'm shitting on it. And I said, like, I responded, and I go, like, um, I corrected the video title, and I said, I don't know the name, but John123. Hey, John, um, I just want to thank you for your feedback. I've corrected the um, the title on the video, so now it should be, uh, it should be the correct spelling. Uh, you know, it was around Christmas time. So I'm like, I hope you and your family have the best time over the holidays. And then I pressed enter literally like a hundred times. And then put, and by the way, go fuck yourself, you cunt. You know? And then I literally just pissed myself laughing when I did that. And the person deleted his comment. So, yeah. yeah. Funny. You're funny, dude. Yeah. Oh, my God. But that's the thing. I mean, you've been getting a lot of stick lately. We have the freedom of that. Though. That's something he doesn't have. Yeah. You see, it, that's a nice thing to be like to have the freedom to do that is a nice thing yeah and he don't have that he's yep. got licenses he's got responsibility he has it's, it's impossible it's yep. impossible to turn around to somebody that you just want to say oh, look, why don't you just fuck off and you just can't yep. and you just you sort of like have to and that's in a way something that's quite important to remember from being on the other side is you're poking a bear that you know can't fucking bite your back Yep. So, you know, I mean, it's a it's a bullying tactic more than anything else. Oh, yeah. No, we, we're not, we're not, I don't have any of that. You know? Yeah, I bet huh? that first bombs down will come from Geo not showing up. <laughs> <laughs> probably. He's got, someone, probably. He's got someone coming after you now. <laughs> yeah, fuck them. I don't care. So, yeah, just continuing through these comments as well. So, uh, Darren Crowe is saying he's a big... Um, Fan of Warriors, is that something you would ever look into? 
Uh, yeah, uh, yes, it. I have. I have thought about that multiple times. Uh, I've never seen it. Ran into a couple dead ends, but still on the list, most definitely. All right. Um, what was the most difficult challenge uh, you've encountered since starting up a statue company? <laughs> Great question. <laughs> uh, Great question. The most difficult challenge was the turnaround, like all day, all day, every day. Yeah. Uh, and I would say, and, and Mark would agree, that challenge and turnaround made us a whole lot stronger uh, to the point where I feel like we can, if, if we just put our minds to it, we can accomplish almost anything. Uh, because I, I feel like that was like our valley, right? That's the, we were in the bottom, right? And for us to be able to come back up uh, from that, that makes me feel like if, if something else is thrown our way, recession or whatever, I feel like we have the tools to figure out a way to work around it or get out of it. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of people who probably would have gone, Nah, this doesn't. No, I mean, that's enough. Oh yeah, I, 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 I guarantee a lot of people would have given up after mm -hmm. the the first year and just let the company go. Absolutely. Uh, Leon, it's a good timing because he's actually come up with the carnage here now. Hoping for some info on a venom bust. Hoping for a lethal protector theme with scream, agony, uh, is that page riot and lasher. How amazing would a fine art infinity themed statue bust for Thanos be as well? Yep. Uh -huh. Absolutely. All those are on our list. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially Venom. Uh, so, yeah. So, I mean, like this, this obviously then is. The what did you card. say, mine? What did you just say, sneakily there? What did you just say? He said, especially Venom. <laughs> That's what yeah. I wanted to hear. Good uh, but again, since we're on, on the show and we can give out some exclusives. So, we have for this year for fine art for Marvel, we have the Gladiator Hulk that we already talked about. And then we're doing a Deadpool. Uh, find our Should bus. we do that then? Is that is that the time for this? Oh yeah, yes. we do Deadpool's not on there, but yes. <laughs> so this is on. the uh, the planned the plan for quarter two of 2024. So these are the releases you kind of have planned. Do you want to run through those? Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. So Street Fighter wise, uh, Cammy's actually done painting. Uh, we should have her next. Oh, I got it right here. Uh, should have her next week. Uh, Karen E. Honda with our Street Jam that's continuing to go. Uh, and then we'll also do Ryu Fitness. Uh, we have him curling uh, for his uh, for his exercise. Uh, Horror-wise, got the ghost face, half scale. Uh, when everybody sees the exclusive on that, they're going to freaking flip. Uh, it's going to be awesome. Uh, Candyman quarter scale for the people that were waiting for the quarter scale version. Uh, uh, the Howling, which we already talked about, and then Army of Darkness, of course. Marvel-wise, uh, we we showed the Juggernaut uh, tent scale. Uh, he's actually huge; like he's he yeah, I like saw the picture. Quarter. It looks massive. Yeah, he looks like a, he feels like a quarter scale size statue. He's humongous. Uh, what, Wayne so talking about game universe, what happened to Con uh, Thanos? So Thanos didn't sell very well uh thanos thanos was an example of one that we put out and another company started sneaking that they were doing one as well uh and given we were kind of handcuffed to gamer verse uh that was too much to overcome a comic version uh of that. yeah uh so we had to we had to cancel that one uh let's see oh winged venom that's being sculpted by the Keurig brothers as well. That's going to be freaking, that's going to be the, the, the venom to have. Like that thing is going to be crazy. Uh, oh, venom? Yeah, wow. The wing yeah, third scale venom. Wing venom. Oh. Do you know the one like, on, is that like the one from the, uh, the scum cover? That's, I think that's where it kind of started, didn't it? Yep. Mm, yep. Yeah. And we're doing, we're basically going to offer that one both with and without wings. So the people that just want a cool ass venom. Without the footprint of the wings, uh, that'll be an option. Uh, but that it's 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 amazing. Uh, Hulk Fine Art Bus that's going to be in May, I believe. Uh, we're finishing that up, uh, and then we have the Game Reverser uh, Venom Tent Scale that'll be coming. Uh, Transformers, I think 
people have already seen the the sneak that the Keurig brothers have showed of uh, their Optimus Prime that was uh, designed okay. and based on their art. Uh, that's going to be amazing. Uh, NBA wise, we got Magic Johnson, and then the life size Jordan bust. Uh, that Jordan bust is the the famous uh, poster, the wingspan poster. Mm -hmm. So he is almost seven feet wide. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wingspan is 6'11". So that thing is huge. Uh, and we'll show that at, that'll be at uh, C2E2 uh, in Chicago, which will be cool. No LeBron James in though. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> uh, movie icon wise, we got uh, Ed 209, third scale. Uh, that's going to be humongous. Yeah, I was going to say that a third scale Ed Two Hundred Nine. That's going to be ridiculous. Yep. <laughs> we that that one may be an example of one where we may do third scale and, and quarter scale at the same time, uh, just yes. for the people that bought our yeah, original quarter one scale. Third, isn't Ed Two Hundred Nine like about like fifteen twenty feet tall? No, no he's only no, like no. seven eight feet tall. He's yeah. wide, but he's, yeah. he's he's chunky though. Yeah, he's very yeah. chunky. Jeez, I remember him like, falling down you, the stairs. Will you, were, you, uh, were you do it with like the legs so that you can like adjust the legs as well? And so we've thought about that, but then you start getting into licensing issues when you have moving parts. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we yeah. do have him in a nice, nice, unique pose from the movie that that looks pretty awesome. Uh, and then the uh, I think it's uh, nice where he's kind of turning as well. That's that's quite a yep. nice pose. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yes. Uh, so that one we may offer in third and quarter just because people do have quarter scale Robocops too. And oh, yeah. you can't really do multiple Ed 209s. You can really just do him once, right? There's, you can't, he's not really moving that much. Yeah. Uh, we got quarter scale Winston. Yep. Good. Sorry. I think the Ed 209 has only been kind of looked into, obviously, in six scale. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's been done in six scale, obviously, by Hot Toys, Nick yep. Car. Uh, the smaller scale, but then I think, um, oh god, there was that really expensive one which is in six scale, but it was meant to be based upon the actual puppet or something, yeah. And yeah, that was Chronicles, uh, Chronicles, yeah, yeah, Chronicles, yes, that was it. Yeah. And so, someone actually is asking because of um, the an area going out of business, is there now an opportunity for, for you guys to do a your Robocop in uh, court scale? Uh, we do have the core scale Robocop license. Uh, okay. we've always had it. Uh, if we do it again, it would be like a totally different pose, uh, for him. It, it'd have to be different than our original quarter scale and different yeah. from our, our third scale. If we do do it, uh, Ghostbusters Winston quarter scale, he just finished sculpting yesterday. Uh, Crow third scale, which we've talked about, should be done sculpting in about a week or so. Uh, uh, we're doing Rocky third three diorama, the basically that punch scene at the end of the movie where you don't know who's going to land the punch. Uh, you mean the this, Apollo? This, 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 yeah, but that's right. You, you, you say three. You said three, right? Yeah, Rocky three. Yep. But when he, you mean where? You know, I mean when he's fighting with Apollo and. It, yep. it stops right yep. at the end of the film. Yes. That leads on to Rocky IV. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. With the yellow gloves. Iconic. Iconic. Yep. Nice. So doing that. Uh, Star Wars, again, first reveals Darth Maul in third scale first. Oof. Yeah. Got to come out banging. Uh, and then Darth Vader, fine art bust, which, oh my God, is freaking amazing. Yeah. Like, I, I feel like every time we do one of these fine art busts, they keep getting better and better. Uh, so yeah, that one's going to be amazing. And then Ninja Turtle wise, we got Michelangelo third scale, April cartoon and missing from this list is the, uh, the sewer cover, uh, cause we were going to put in the first quarter, but I pushed it out to second quarter. So that'll be added on, uh, as well. The old titles of the ship, they look crazy. They look really good. Yep. Yeah. There you go. And as someone yeah. asks here as well, is like, what's it like working with uh, the K Bros? Oh, they're awesome. Uh, the funny thing is, is uh, our minds are like so aligned uh, to where it's like we'll almost type or say something at the same time when we're like reviewing something, or 
they'll put something down and then I'm responding at the same time. And we literally put the exact same thing down. Uh, I love working with those dudes. They're, they're awesome. They're awesome. They're very, I mean, their, you, their concepts are so good. Yeah. If you retired today, mm -hmm. stopped for any particular reason, Yep. what would be the piece that you've made that you're the most proud of? Uh, uh, that we've, uh, oh, I would say the uh, last Ronin Supreme. Mm. With the all the brothers is. and the great, all of that nice. going on. That yep. was a big turning point in that piece for you, no? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I think that was a big moment. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Good. I'm glad I'm glad I felt that as well as, as, as you saying that. What about you, Martin? What do you think, bro? Um, Mark. Yeah. Sorry. Mark. No, no, it, Mark. it's fine. Mark. Martin, Mark. Martin works too, right? It's his, same, it's his surname, isn't it? <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> um that's a tough one man it's like it's like uh asking who my favorite child is um <laughs> that's why i've heard, heard that from i've heard I've that from other owners i've got three i've got three sons and i can answer that question so the fact that you can't answer it is no 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 no. it's we can answer it but you never say it out loud you know and and i think i think my that question can, can be answered at differently at different periods of time, right? Sure. Uh, uh, I think <laughs> this is going to sound weird, but my my favorite piece that I would I would take with me in case of a fire is is our one third scale purgatory. It's it's just yes. yeah, yeah. It's, nice piece. it's amazing, yeah. beautiful piece, and and she came out great. So it 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 that's that's my answer. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> ah, good. Yeah, good man. All right, so. What is a piece that you really want to make? Like, if you, if, if I could say to you right now, forget about license, forget about every, all the red tape. If you can make any piece, if you can make a statue of anything, what would that be? My question yeah. is really are dangerous. You see, this is yes, that is a. Uh... <laughs> so <I'm> gonna... <laughs> my answer is probably going to throw people uh, because there would. I would have two different answers depending on how I want to answer that question. Uh, the piece I want to make from a money perspective and the piece I would want to make for just me. So, uh, I would want to do for me show enough from last dragon. Mm. I don't know what that is. What is that? Oh, oh you don't know. Last, show enough? Want to show enough last dragon, Bruce Leroy. No. Oh, you gotta look it up. <laughs> yes, that is a classic, 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 classic in the U.S. Uh, is it a film? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's in the eighties. It sounds like a piss take. Is it's it a like piss take a, or something? No, no, it was like an old oh, like no. movie. But they did do a piss take of it with like Michael J. White, didn't they? Uh, something where they they did like a piss take or something like that with Michael J. White. He kicks the front door and then old lady goes flying at the beginning is well funny. I mean, that's, that's called Black Dynamite, I think that is. Yeah, that's like, that yeah, that's uh, yeah, so pull up pull up Last Dragon real quick for the for the people uh, that know. And then when you see when you see show enough. Uh who, who so what was the money piece? Money wise, uh I would love to do like a Batman fine art. Mm -hmm. uh, ah. I think that would we would absolutely kill that. Slaughter uh, that, yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, it's, it's not impossible. Yeah. Still on our still on our list. And you, Mark? You got something you're uh, going after? Yeah, you know, what's funny is that is that if you'd asked me this a year ago, it would have been Star uh, Wars. A one third scale Darth Vader. That's that's what I would You've wanted. achieved it. But but now, yeah, we we're on the cusp of making that. Eventually. Nice. Um, so, and then, and then, is what's funny is that two years ago it probably would have been um, a, a Bruce Willis from Die Hard because that's my favorite movie of oh, all time. Oh my God, you and Alex are gonna date. <laughs> <laughs> we have so many discussions about. Oh, I've, I've, I've oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, I know that. I know that picture. There. Oh, wait a minute. I'm glad. So, yes, Jesse, thank you. That is the piece I would want to do all day, every day. Spawn. That is, I, I don't know why oh, I just brain farted on that. Spawn. Yes, absolutely. Spawn, Spawn would be my choice. Spawn would be before Show Enough and before Batman Fine Art. 
co- comic or, or movie? Spawn, just, 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 oh, comic. Comic all day. They don't want, yeah, they don't want Spawn. Like, he doesn't want to release it, does he? McFarlane no, does I, I, that's another one I, I'm not going to give up on. I've, talking, I've talked to Todd multiple times. Uh, <laughs> you know, I thought he said Shia LaBeouf when, <laughs> when he said yeah! Shia LaBeouf. That's I funny. wish he said Shia LaBeouf because I know who the fuck that is. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Spawn all day on both answers, personally and money wise. Yeah. Will be Spawn third scale yeah. all freaking day. That's one that's needed. That's one that's really needed in the licensed companies because I think, we scale. I think McFarlane's yeah. miss, missing out there by not allowing it to happen. They're yeah. just like basically just call the custom markets are going for it. Yeah. Um, Take and I would say out. second second to spawn would be the Max after that. The Max, that's quite cool. One. Yeah, 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 yeah. The big yeah. purple thing with the... the yeah, with the, the thing yeah. on his hands. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, remember I remember there that. was like an MTV car too that was really cool, right? Oh, yeah. Yep. yep. Yeah, very cool. Um, so, yeah, will there be two. a new Dread coming anytime soon? Uh, possibly, yes. <laughs> uh, and probably the Dark Judges as well. Okay. And those uh, would be any chance done by those Martin. would be uh done by Martine. Oh nice. Ooh. Is it like is okay. it like what's like Judge Death? Is that like, who we're yeah. talking about? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh will there be yeah, an evil ash in Uh yes, in the in the future. Yes. Okay, cool. Uh any chance okay, no, I've asked that one. Uh do we do you think we'll see a splinter in one third? Mm. Yes. Okay. Uh, Your shredder is unbelievable, bro. Yeah, that's shredder. So Jack, that. Jack, Jack Nicholson, Tom Cruise, Mel Gibson, and more that own their own. Okay, that's not a question. Uh, uh, hold on, let me see. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. Mel doesn't. Tom doesn't because I could have gotten uh, Top Gun, but they're like, no, Tom, and I was like, yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> Ice Man. The Iceman. Yeah. So, uh, do you think it's a problem as well with the older movies having not as much of a high uh, high quality references material? Have high quality references. That has material? that is a pain pain in the dick, uh, to say the least. Uh, it does make the process a whole lot more difficult, uh, especially when you're trying to do screen grabs and it's fuzzy and. Yeah. Uh, it's it is difficult, but we we find a way. I have this yeah, conversation with, with Ghostbusters, Dude, uh, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Ghostbusters is an example. Uh, Underworld is an example. That yeah. movie is is filmed really dark. Uh, yeah. Trying to get Celine's boots and outfits and the designs yeah. on the back of her jacket right. I mean, it took forever uh, for us. But to there, try there to must be those. that kind of movie in that kind of time. There must be like like those City Effects magazines, and there must be the art of books for those two to be coupled. No, no. So really? for Underworld, we got the back of her jacket from a auction that was selling the jacket from the movie. That was the oh, only wow. way we were able to get those images. Jesus. Yeah, you don't <laughs> think about it. It's something that would slip your mind, didn't it? Yep. But this is something that come, kind of comes up in conversation with myself and Dave, who was commenting earlier, Dave Wolf. He, he basically like messages me going, Oh yeah, I've just got the 4K version of this movie, and I'm like, so I'm like, and he goes, yeah, yeah, it's great. This is, I'm like, dude, that's a fucking 80s horror film. Why yes. the fuck do you want to watch that in 4K? You yep. know why? Oh, this is made brain. to be a VHS movie. It's yep. made so that you can't see or what's beta. happening. <laughs> and as soon as you put it on, like 4K, you see everything, and it ruins it. Any yep. Tom Savini dude, movie, you do not want to watch in 4K. So yeah, dude. I remember when me and Alex sat down to watch a pirate copy of uh, the first Turtles movie. That yeah. shit was dark. As fuck. <laughs> that was like that was, that was like watching something at night. There were everything was off. I mean, yeah. that was that, right. that was the. I mean, Turtles even in like HD I now, it, the first film was pretty dark. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You know, but watching the really crap copy of it is even darker. Well, yeah, try, we had that try, getting, uh, try getting some howling references from that movie. Do you oh, know yeah. that's another film I've never seen. Yeah, that, that seen movie it. is so dark, so blurry. Uh, the the colors are different than what the actual model was. Sometimes they use a yeah. puppet, sometimes life side. Like it's yeah, that was yeah. That 
that was is that Rick good. Baker? No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What? Okay then. Now you brought up Howling, and I know you're making it, but which transformation do you think is better than Howling or American Wolf in London? Because that's that's the question, isn't it? That people get asked. So uh, a lot of people are big fans of the Howling Werewolf. Uh, even people that I did not know were into like horror or even wolves. Uh, I would say it's probably like a 60-40. Uh, like a 60 Like sixty forty. The wolf the is better, but just the transformation. Howling. Oh, you're talking about the transformation. Oh, I like, I like American Wolf. But yeah, I like American Wolf from London transformation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it is amazing for that. And there's a lot of reverse stuff. But no, no, the, the, the Howling Wolf, I think, is better. But the transformation yeah. in American Wolf is better. And I think yeah. I prefer American Wolf as a movie. I've got, so I, go, I don't know why, but I've got quite an attachment to that film. And actually, George actually bought that for my birthday one time on DVD. He probably doesn't remember that, but he did. Um, which okay so uh hey and new pieces going up here every week and so far everything is scheduled for quarter three quarter four are you sure this is doable should we expect delays uh come uh can't wait to get the new vampirella though yes so are you kind of on schedule is, with this? yeah yeah we are on schedule if there's a delay it would be like a month maybe two months not like six months, one year, because uh, again, it's this stuff. We're we're trying to get tight on everything. Uh, we'll need to do you another. Know what's coming. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you need to move. Yes, uh, and it's the like we don't get paid until it's delivered, right? Yeah. So we have every, and, and let me. I'll take a step back. Uh, most companies don't operate the way we do. And what I mean by that is when we get a deposit, we're not spending it. That's not earned money. That sits there until we deliver. Uh, so until we finish production and ship it out, I have zero revenue. So we have every incentive, and that's the way we run this company. So we have every incentive to get this stuff produced uh, as quick as possible uh, because we don't recognize or spend or touch money until it's in a collector's hand. It's funny, you're almost the anti of your, you know, the person that stood there before you. Isn't that funny how that works? Eh? <laughs> yeah, we learned our lesson. Yes, that's the that's the accountant in me. <laughs> yeah. I think I think that the, the definition of a smart man is someone who learns from lessons that other people should be yep. paying for. Absolutely. Rather than yourself, it's not you know not your lesson really to learn, unfortunately. But yep. fair point. Any chance of a Monster Squad lineup? Oh, mate, that was a film that was yeah. Monster Squad. I can see that. Was it that? Wolfman's Squad? Nards. <laughs> Wolfman's <Yeah>. Squad. <laughs> uh, uh, Dog yeah. Soldiers. Werewolf Transformation is called cool. Dog Soldiers. Actually, was pretty good when it came out. Good film, Dog uh, Soldiers. I like that. And is Big Trouble in mm. Little China still on the cards? Uh, I'm still trying. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think he answered your question there, Brendan, about the diorama because that's coming up for pre order end of the year. Excited for the 110th uh, Marvel versus Capcom line. We haven't actually spoken about that because you do do, you have quite a range of things you do. You do, you are focusing on that kind of 110th line and you also do uh, game exclusives as well, don't you? So the game um, packs with the, the, the models as well. So you did the Spider Man one with the Venom uh, recently. Yep. Yep. So that that's that's a whole got different revenue chain, and that must be a whole different approach and different market of how how to deal with that oh, as yeah. well. Yeah, totally different. Yeah, the, um, one of the biggest things I learned in business is diversification. Yeah, right. So you'll see we do different. So even though we're doing six to seven a month, they're across different genres, different brands. Uh, and spread out accordingly, right? We're not doing like five turtles in one month, right? They're spread out yeah. throughout the year. Uh, we're not doing a half scale ghost face and a half scale Myers in the same month. It's spread out. Uh, and that's diversification, right? We got everything from 10 scale up to life size. Crazy. Uh, da, da, da. A lot yeah, of, that's a lot of plates. Leave. That's a lot yeah. of plates that is like that you're balancing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. You know what I mean? Because uh, you're, you're talking about different scales, different whole different worlds. You're going in between game, animation, you know, real life movie pieces. Yep. I was going to ask you did, you, did you keep the Street Fighter thing just to give some of the original 
PCS people something to sort of identify with. Uh, well, I, I wondered why, you, like, I, I, I don't know if it was your passion or with the Street Fighter stuff, but you seem to keep it going for people, which I, I sort of, you know, I commend you on that because I, I don't think it comes from a place within yourself. I think it's something you give in because uh, that's it's, what they it's started. A, it's a little bit of both. Uh, I would say the main reason is because of our fans. They want uh, Street Fighter. Uh, I am a huge fan of Street Fighter and the Capcom team. That's the other reason. Uh, I mean, we have stopped some lines that fans want us to continue, like the third scale. They just weren't, the last three weren't moving. Uh, and you can't, yeah, you can't I don't, yeah. I don't think they ever really did well, did they? To be honest, even previously, uh, yeah, yeah. Ryu, Akuma, Chun Li did well. Uh, Cammy did, Cammy did decent, yeah. Cammy did decent, uh, but like Sagat was okay, Bison wow. was bleh. Uh, and then it was like people were like, We want Ken, and I look at the quarter scale, yeah. Uh, I analyze everything so I can look at a quarter scale Ryu, how he sold versus a quarter scale Ken, how he sold. And that difference can help me, yes, decide, okay, if we do a third scale, there's probably going to be that same type of percentage different. And if Ryu doesn't do great, then that means Ken is going to totally bomb. Right. So that's the type of stuff that we I've given up too much of our cookies, but uh, <laughs> that's the stuff that we we look at and pay a, pay attention to. Uh, and I think that's I, I hate saying this, but we're probably going to see some companies start to fail uh, over the next six, 16 months. We, we've seen uh, it already. Yeah. I mean, we've seen the uh, two French companies went down. So we saw Gibson yep. and uh Aneri, they both went. And the funny thing was Aneri was showing that they were selling out every product. Um, yeah. So that was kind of a surprise. That must be just, well, that's got to be even lying about the sellouts or poor management uh, with the money. But, um, yep. yeah, we will no, see. And then, we know we'll behind the scenes up. as well. We've got, we got, we got people everywhere. So we know that, 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 that some companies are in trouble. Yeah. So they're really trying to kick, you know, do as, as well as they can. But it's it's a very saturated market at the moment. So it's... Well, it's I would, so I'll say it's it's a couple things. So saturated market, absolutely. Uh, too many makers, uh, and when I say too many makers, I'll say licensed and yeah. unlicensed, right? Yeah, I, agree. Uh, I will say it, that on the the unlicensed side, I have already seen the the crackdown coming. Uh, I've already heard of one factory getting completely shut down uh, by the government and all the product destroyed. Uh, and people arrested. Uh, so, and I've also heard from other licensors that they're now getting more because it at this point it's now starting to take money out of licensors' pockets, right? Uh, so they're now putting the money into legal to start going after factories, makers. Yeah. Uh, they technically can also go after people that buy uh, because it's similar to buying a pirated movie, right? That's illegal uh to own it uh so it's the crackdown on that side's coming uh so that's that's one but from a license maker perspective a lot of these companies and and i don't mean to say this harshly or bad uh but a lot of these companies were started by artists uh that weren't necessarily business uh oriented or business minded uh, where, like I said earlier in the in the uh, in the stream, I'm right and left brained, right? So I have the art side, but I am very analytical, business oriented uh, as well. And with that, when we make hires, for example, uh, we're not just going out and just like increasing our our overhead just to make our life easier or to add bodies. Like everything has to fit a piece. And when that piece is added, we wait a while to make sure that we're getting a return on on our investment before we add the next piece. And that's how we continue so that we don't have to fire people because we just hired too many people. Uh, I still remember to this day to a New York Comic Con and there was a company that came from uh, from out of the country. Mm -hmm. We had a 20 by 20 booth. It was me, Mark two other people working the, putting it together and working the booth for the whole time for New York Comic Con. Four people, 20 by 20 booth. 
Another company comes, has a 10 by 10 booth. They're coming from out of the country. We came from Charlotte. So our flights were like 200 bucks, mm -hmm. right? They're coming from out of country, 10 by 10 booth. They had 20 plus people that they flew in from out of country. <laughs> to me, that is asinine to spend that money to fly all those people out when you only need a handful of people to run a booth. Yes, it may be fun to for everybody to come, but guess what? Five of you can go this year, five can go next year. If you want everybody to have the experience, spread it out. But it's like decisions like that is the missing business part of some of these companies. And it goes back to the same with like deposit money, spending it instead of saving it for production. So you'll see companies do pre-orders to pay for the last pre-order instead of saving yeah. that money. Well, that's and the customs do it as well. That, that's why yeah. they all fall out because they – they see that they, they, so they put up a pre-order. They see it do really well. They spend. They think the next one's going to do that well. It doesn't. Then they can't keep up, and then they go missing with the money. And that's like quite yep. common. Like, I do believe, like in most cases, that when these things happen, it's not a malicious thing in most cases, and it is just a poor management of money. And, oh yeah, you know, absolutely, absolutely. So, when when did we meet? Then it was we like two thousand and seven, I think, when I met you. Oh, 17, sorry, 17. Yeah, yeah, it was either 17 or 18. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. I think I was there 17, 18, and 19. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. But uh, all right, we'll just finish up on some of these questions. We've been, I think we've had enough of your enough of your time. Obviously, I mean, with these kind of things, we could talk. Oh, really well. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's still, still awake, Ant. Yeah. Apart yeah, from yeah, apart yeah still awake. Everyone's awake. So That's the thing as well. George is normally in the background going like, like you're in like constantly yeah, Alex, on the comments. Going, like, we're so fucking boring, bro. Like, like, <laughs> that's what it is. At least when I have guests on here, they, they give me something else. I'm, I'm learning stuff, you know, I'm engaged. That's what it's about. You, you put me down honestly, so much, I talk to you like, every you day for hours. It's like, yeah. Yeah, you you call me every day and you call me like five <laughs> times a day. So then you're a fucking <laughs> idiot, aren't you? You basically well, stay by this part, by this part of evil is about enough now. <laughs> God. Um, so yeah, so why does this keep coming up? I've done we've done the Rocky Dio. Uh, I paid that Vampirella, blah blah blah. Oh, so what's this one then? Um, I went to the uh, non fundable deposit full payment option on Vampirella. You mentioned a new payment system being developed. Uh, when is that live? Will I be able to add payment plan to an existing order? I am passing the buck completely to this guy on the website. <laughs> yeah. So um, my big project for this year has been to develop something that is is unique for um, the industry and, and, and for um, pre-order type selling. And um, we ran into so many problems with um, payment plans and, and uh, it, I, there's not really a good payment plan system out there. Everything is subscription based, right? So yeah. You have, and if you do it through uh, PayPal, they fuck you over and take all your money. Which oh, people yeah. don't know. People don't know that. But if you try to do it as a legitimate company and you try and incorporate a payment plan to make it easy for your customers, PayPal will withhold all of your money. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So, so, so we, we went with a, a different company, but they're still kind of just as bad. So I've spent the last four or five months um, working with a development team to come up with a brand new software that will um, make everyone from it, our, our team to the collector's life a lot easier. Um, you can basically, once the system is live, which it should be within, say, a month or so, um, <laughs> You'll be able to to pre-order a product, put down a deposit. Um, you'll be able to change your your payment plan on the fly. You'll be able to add money to your account to to pay for um, uh, pre-ordered stuff. Um, it's it's just it's amazing product that that's completely custom, and uh, it, it, I'm I'm proud of it. It's it's taken a lot of work. So um, the answer is yes. Absolutely, uh, to that question, um, and it, it's just going to take a little while. So basically, it's, it's been seven you're, months. You're, you're, <laughs> you're, you're, you're going all uh, Kevin Costner field of dreams. 
Yes. If you build, if you build it, they'll come, right? Yes. That's yeah. Yeah. No, you, you haven't been able to find somebody who will do it, so you're going to have to make it. You're yep. getting it. So you're oh, good. I got you. I'm with you. Well, yeah. and and that's something that that I I grew up kind of. My business world was in uh, e-commerce. Uh, I started my first company in 2004, and there was no software. There's no, nothing back then that would would handle the the stuff that I needed. So um, I'm I'm pretty familiar with the customization of, of these things, and and I, I feel like if it doesn't exist, then just make it. But I, that's my attitude to have rather than just basically say it can't be done. Yep, right. absolutely. Because a lot of people would just say it can't be done. Yep. Can't be done. Yep. Spoken to people, it's, it's not going to work. It's not feasible. So, yep. you know, you're a bit, you're a bit like my wife in that regard. She's she will just find a way. And oh if, yeah. It, if she can't find somebody who will do it, then she will do it. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And it doesn't matter what it is. If it doesn't matter. So no. that's fair play. Uh, is there any chance of a ninja guided license? Uh, possibly, yes. Okay. Um, really nice for some music related, uh, movie wise, like Planet of the Apes as well. So you did do music wise stuff. So you did like Prince. Um, yes. Before, are you going to expect, do any more kind of music lines? Uh, we may. Uh, I would love. Yeah, we may do some more music icons. Uh, in the future. Uh, Planet of the Apes is definitely on the list uh, as well. That was one of the old PCS pieces, which people yep. were pissed off. At. They didn't get that was the you know the general Ursa yeah, Earth, on the Earth, 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 Earth. Yeah, it, it was like going to be. It was always going to be a really low run, yep. and um, I think it just didn't make that low run, and it just got cancelled. Yep. But, yep. But yeah, yeah, but the new movie's think, coming out as well. So yeah, no, that's definitely. Definitely not. I still haven't seen. I still haven't seen the third one, and I, it's one of the ones which I really. I, I don't know why I haven't seen it. It's one of the things I because I, I love the the first of the War of the Planet of the Apes. Um, well, what's it? What's the first? The first one is the one with John Lithgow. That's the really good one, and then the next yeah. one is Rise, and then the, there's War. Dawn. I haven't seen War. Yeah, no. Rise of the Planet of the Apes is the first one. Dawn okay. of the Planet of the Apes, I think, is the second one, isn't it? Yeah, and then there's the third one, War. I, I haven't seen it's whatever the third one is. Whatever the third one is, I haven't seen. Mm -hmm. uh, any Hellraiser plans in the future? Uh, I've been working on that for for a while as well. That's that's on my long term Star Wars type plan. <laughs> uh, yeah. Never give up. <laughs> That'd be nice. To uh, one first. Definitely. Give, give out a break now from the questions, man. Now can't they'll, they'll, these little go on all night. It'll never ever escape. <laughs> He's done well. He's He's right, done, uh, he, they've both done very very well. Love his, 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 friend, his friend has been asking questions as well. <laughs> um, should we do? Uh, nah, I'm not going to put him in there because he's, he's he's raising quite a, like, a bit bittery questions. <laughs> uh, nah, I'm not going to go there. I think, so, I think we need to just say that uh, two things. One massive thank you for and for coming on and for uh, Mark for being here as well. Appreciate that, bro, and uh, being there for the. Important for the some of the like uh, more technical questions, especially the website and the payment plan thing, which is an important one because it's, it's part of what you've uh, sort of set out to do. Um, I also want to say a massive uh, shout out to our sponsor, you know, the the uh, speculative fiction, fiction team. So if you're not being you know, a spe speculative fiction shop, Todd Johnson, if you don't know him, his details are there. You can check him out. And, uh, he's basically, you know, he's got all the lines for you. He's got all the bits and pieces that you're going to need. Find you whatever you need. Even if it's something that he's not got on his books, he can locate it and sort you out. So he's a, it's a collector shop run by collectors. So if you don't know who they are, check out Spec Fiction, the top, top team. And, also, uh, at the moment, he does have uh, special offers on the XM Catwoman has 27% off, uh, XM Rogue has 23% off, and the XM 2099 Spider-Man has 33% off. So, yeah, it's got some weekly deals in there. 50% off? 33. 33% 33 still? Crazy question. <laughs> oh. But anyway, thanks, people, for being on. And... Uh, like subscribe and share this video with everybody you know and uh, appreciate all the support and thanks for the great questions as well we'll catch you next week where we will be um chatting to somebody else as well we've got another guest on next week so we're going to be running through that and uh, we'll catch up with the news probably the week after peace out bye bye later <laughs>